and uh, welcome to that uh, last uh, Golem Academy session for the year 2021. Well, the year is not finished, so you never know, but uh, as far as we plan, <laughs> that's supposed to be the last one. Good evening or good morning, everybody. I let uh, people, uh, some time to, for the people to join. I hope you're all doing well. And uh, today's session will be about reviewing uh, the submission we had. And uh, we'll see, depending on uh, uh, how much time that will take, uh, if there are some, uh, you know, casual caveats or uh, some stuff we couldn't really uh, show, uh, maybe we'll take some time uh, to also show that to you. So it's recorded somewhere and uh, you can refer to that later. Hey everybody, thanks for joining today. So um, remember casual staff, um, if you want uh, to send your message to everybody uh, in the audience today, change the default uh, drop down value to uh, all panelists and attendees. If you just uh, send your message to all panelists, that will just be um, Alex and me. And uh, probably we can uh, make a final introduction as well. So uh, my name is Nico. I'm a product manager at Golem. And also at the same time, Alex is uh, connected and he's going to be moderating uh, the chat box. Uh, the question and answer form uh, will be open today. If uh, you know you've got uh, any questions that maybe we missed in the Discord, or maybe you were not onto the Discord, and um, and uh, you had issues, uh, or there were some stuff which uh, sound weird to you, uh, you can still use the question and answer. I'll take some time to address uh, the casual uh, the casual questions we had, or maybe Alex will answer those as well. So if um, everything goes well, that's going to be so myself uh, reviewing. So I'm not a crowd TD, but I can probably share just my experience and also my experience regarding the software, uh, the part I like, the things you may want to improve. And uh, we may be joined um, by um, uh, William. Uh, so William Beaumont is French. Uh, he's working as a crowd supervisor at uh, Meta Studio. And uh, before he was working at uh, Micros Animation um, and plenty of different studios. So he is one, one of the guy, uh, you know, who start crowds from school exactly the same way that you did. Uh, we had like two days teaching. I had two days teaching in that school and uh, he caught uh, the crowd virus and uh, decided to embrace that career. And now he's a crowd supervisor at Method Studio. So that's a great start of a career. And um, also, uh, if he had some times left and uh, sometimes some free times during his day, uh, probably David uh, Raymond uh, is a Canadian uh, from Montreal. He's working as a crowd supervisor, uh, department supervisor at Rodeo FX. He may join, not really sure. Uh, it was supposed to be quite busy today, so uh, we'll see uh, uh, how it goes. So um, I guess, uh, so we get started. Uh, we we'll probably like uh, you know loop back on the submissions anyway. If uh, William joined, we may restart uh, or or you know uh, we go back to the previous covered uh, submissions. We received uh, I think thirty two submissions, uh, so that's actually uh, pretty great. This is like uh, you know three times more than one I would have expect. So that's great. Uh, also remember that um, you know we kind of put that deadline to uh, last Monday but your licenses are running until, I don't know, May 21st or something. Uh, so if you want to, you know, iterate on your shot based on the, the comments you'll have today, um, you can still do it. And even after that period, you know, we'll be happy to unlock your scenes. Um, you know, if you still want to work, keep working on this and uh, may even provide a, you know, a, a non-commercial license to uh, the, you know, the, the most motivated of you guys. And uh, we'll be happy to keep making support and helping you achieving great shots and uh, getting your first, uh, or maybe not your first, or uh, a new uh, position as a crowd TD somewhere. 
Um, as you may have noticed on the Discord, there's plenty of offers. Like uh, I posted the new ones, but if you go on the jobs.golden.com, you'll see that there are plenty of open positions right now. Uh, some are remote, some are not. And, uh, you know, we'll be happy to um, help you driving you through that process and maybe recommend some of you guys as well. So, okay, let's get moving. Um, and uh, let's move into the submission. So um, I just seen a few of those. So it will be like brand new eye. I didn't want, you know, to watch those um, before. So uh, I just uh, saw a couple which were shared on our internal Slack, uh, but there's some uh, stuff that I'm going to discover. Uh, if you guys are, I mean, in the chat, um, you know, let me know uh, if you're here when uh, we're going to go through your submission. I may have some questions regarding what's the technique you used, if there's some uh, critic uh, stuff. So, okay, let's uh, move on and uh, see uh, first submission. So, okay, can I pause at the beginning and see what's the name of the video? Probably not. Anyway, never mind. Uh, Okay, it's actually here, so I'm not gonna like full screen this. So I'm gonna put something like this so I can see the name of the video. So it's called the uh, archery scene uh, from Leonard. And uh, let's go. Let's uh, view what wants. Oh, sorry, VLC is making a, a mess out of it. Let's wait for it to restart. So we've got a archery scene with um, people apparently emitting some arrows, some arrows. Um, maybe hitting the characters and some characters falling. Um, is, uh, is Leonard around? Or um, if, you, if you are, when your video starts, let me know, uh, let's put a message into the chat box. So, well, in terms of behavior, it looks pretty great. Uh, and uh, that's uh, everything. That's a lot of stuff we've seen during the Academy. So uh, that's applied uh, probably the same way with maybe collisions. I'm not sure if the characters are collided with the arrows or if it's just some random collision with uh, some physics. Well, I can't really tell, which means it's a good thing. Uh, so it probably works. Um, I guess, well, if, uh, if there were some textures on the environment, that would have been even better. So uh, you'll be more emerged into the shots, but I, I kind of like it. Uh, you've got uh, visual diversity, which helps selling the stuff. You've got some slight motion diversity as well. Uh, I can see a, a small time offset. It looks like the arrow are also emitted with slight delay with a bit of random. So, you know, all those stuff, which make it more organic, uh, really helps. And you got that composition with the banner guy and the guy uh, asking for uh, the arrow to throw. Uh, and yeah, and there's some sound. I'm not sure if the sound is shared on my side, but yeah, the guy who's uh, giving the order, uh, there's also some sounds to help illustrate this. So pretty great job. Uh, probably I would say uh, I would have loved to see more uh, characters here uh, and you know, not seeing any limits into the environment, just mapping uh, a texture here or uh, just uh, a quick uh, matte painting in the background then uh, that, that would have to sell this. And uh, if you really wanted to help selling the, the beginning of the shot, probably providing some close uh, simulation there, having some wind, and uh, that'll be that'll be perfect. But yeah, I like it pretty well. Uh, just missing some textures and uh, a lot of stuff going on. Okay, let's move on. Um, cavalry charge uh, by Jan, and um, here you can see as soon as you got some textures, some nice environment, really helps selling the shot. So not sure if uh, Jan is around. Let's uh, play this once. That's 21 seconds. Okay, so that's long. So that means we're going to have a charge. Ah, oh, great. Oh, and uh, collisions as well. And okay, and fleeing characters uh, getting killed. Okay, I, I love that shot. A lot of stuff going on. We can see like uneven terrain. Uh, we've been playing with flat terrain uh, during the whole academy, but uh, it never happens in production. Uh, so that really helps having uh, some terrain. So I can see some, huh, a lot of stuff going on. I can see some detaching. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's here so if, you, if you want to ask some question. Yeah, yeah, I, I can see that. Um, <laughs> are the soldiers detaching from the horses? Looks like also you changed the, probably the default textures that we provided. Yeah, okay, they are. So that's great. And uh, okay, there are some collisions here. Are they attacking the character or is it just, okay, it's just a collision uh, collision detection here. 
uh, well, it's the composition is awesome. The camera is great. Uh, everything which happens into one single shot is pretty sweet. We've got some archery hitting the characters and some arrow planting in the ground. So well done for that uh, detail. It looks like to me, it just looks to me that uh, the, the arrows, they're not shaded, they're pure orange. So probably you, you didn't have the, the, the shaders in the scene, but that's really small details. Yeah, I can totally see the arrow planting in the ground. Uh, so that, yeah, that's awesome. Oh, and okay, I, uh, from the comments, I try to use mainly chops to drive the behavior. So you mean that uh, all the navigation of the characters is made with the chops, even the, um, even the, the running soldiers. So that means the horses, but also the, the running soldiers. Yeah, that's a lot of, I like that charge. Is there some sound? No, I don't think so. Yeah, it's based on distance from cavalry. Okay, I like it. So, okay, some really complex behavior here. So there's some perception, distance based. Um, yeah, really great stuff. Uh, if I wanted to improve this, I'll say probably I just uh, maybe miss an attack animation. Maybe do, uh, do, do they have some weapons here? Uh, the soldiers, no, they don't. I would just say probably just had a weapon, maybe a sword. Uh, and uh, as soon as they're close to characters, maybe having an animation which just trying to hit uh, people. So they kind of attack with a weapon. Uh, and that probably would help, you know, uh, getting those uh, collisions, having a, a really nice stuff. But well, it's details here because the shot is uh, by itself. It's super, super nice. I like it. I like the composition of it. Even the physics, I can tell it's a ragdoll. Uh, and by the way, you've got a ragdoll on a non-linear ground. So probably you use the ground, a, the ground, uh, oh, well, I, I can't, the eight map here to make a legion. So yeah, well done on all those. A uh, lot of work here. I can tell a lot of work. Let's move to, um, so next one is um, crowd reel. Uh, and well, by the way, you guys, if you got, you know, any questions, if you want to share, uh, you know, some comments about uh, what you're seeing on my screen, go ahead, uh, make it more uh, lively. Um, yeah, it's a uh, crowd reel, road, uh, road intersection uh, by uh, Zhao Wang, uh, Zhao Yang. Uh, and um, I can tell it's a play blast, right? It's not rendered. Uh, I can see uh, it's missing the shadows. Um, so we've got, uh, let's see, let's run it once first and enjoy it. It looks like a Shibuya crossing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you've got some cars, some traffic, so they do stop. And uh, pedestrian going through and some collision detection, some animation, uh, some random target as well. And uh, some people uh, struggling to cross here in the middle. Uh, super sweet stuff. It's something. Um, it's something I guess we've seen, but mostly in different classes that you merge uh, all together. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's some locomotion, some traffic. Probably you keyframe the traffic locators so they all stop at the same time, like uh, it's actually happening into that crossing in Tokyo. Um, uh, yeah, I, I really like it. If you really want to sell it, uh, probably we're missing, you know, more characters. Uh, like it's like. All the pedestrians, they all like waiting to cross. But uh, if you were into a real city shot, you have uh, you know characters here in the background doing their own life and not especially uh, looking for this. And uh, and you know they will just had life, so the I would not concentrate only on the stopping people from the beginning. Even if I really like the stopping people, like they're really waiting for the sign to go. So I guess there's also some triggers usage here. Uh, to make them cross at the right time. Is there like a zone trigger or like a frame, probably a frame trigger more uh, with some, uh, maybe a fading here. Um, so what's the comment? Sorry for bad rendering because my Arnold and V-Ray not working on my side. Uh, I'm using uh, my hardware render. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's too bad because you didn't get, uh, you know, uh, shading variation on the cars. All the cars are looking white. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, still pretty great work. It's, you know, if you were about to fill a background uh, within the city, you, you've got everybody here. You've got everything here. You've got the cars, you've got the characters. It's just having more and more characters maybe in the background, having, uh, having them working on the sidewalks. Let's see next. Um, 
crowd simulation for Golem Academy from uh, Boris. And let's, uh, so it's uh, it's four seconds. Let's play once uh, or maybe twice. Uh, also, uh, VRC doesn't go uh, mad with compressing. Oh, uh, okay. And once again, really helps uh, having a, a nice environment, even if it's, you know, not, it, it's pretty okay. You've got a ground with some probably procedural textures, some uh, some geometry in the background and some sky, but that really helps like selling the shots, having something uh, nice here. Well, there's a lot of stuff going on here. So uh, custom characters first, I can tell. Uh, here it's now using characters from the character pack. So there was an effort converting characters and motions for your own uh, stuff. There's some um, uh, shading diversity here. I can see uh, they're shading and then they're having different colors, both for the helmets, uh, for the harm, and also the robots on the other side also have some shading variations. They're apparently sharing the same uh, motion, but that that's Lego, so uh, that's expected. And wait, uh, I'm, I'm kind of surprised with those lasers. Are they Golem characters, those lasers? Uh, is Boris around or... Uh, if he is, uh, I really want to know how those uh, golem characters are. They're just like a layer of particle you had it on top, and that's just random collisions. Are they really emitting those lasers from their cannon? Uh, and uh, well, I can see some detached props, some physics. So yeah, that means also that when he converted the character, he also made the physics uh, collisions, and I can see it's looking pretty nice when it falls. So. Yeah, a lot of work here actually, converting your own characters. So it looks like Boris is not here. Oh, he's, I think um, he is here, but. Oh, he is here, but he's shy, maybe. Um, <laughs> if you're shy, you can just uh, send your message to only, uh, you know, all panelists, and that's just us. Uh, but yeah, I'd love to know. But, you know, even if they're not emitted from the guns, I can't tell, which means it's a good thing, right? If I cannot tell if it's emitted from the gun or not, uh, still, it means that it's. Uh, um, um, nicely uh, integrated into the shots, and uh, also if I can tell if the characters are are they like, yeah, are they like falling when they're hit by a laser? Well, I can't tell, but yeah, I can see the inspiration here. Uh, I really like the composition of the shot. It's uh, it's it's just such a shame that it's uh, only four seconds. I'd like I'd like to see more. I'd like to see you know when they get close to each other. Uh, but yeah, great work. Uh, converting your own characters and making physics with it uh, means that uh, there was uh, quite a lot of involvement into this. And detaching the props as well means that uh, they're detaching arms. Yeah, the robots, they're even breaking arms. So means the skinning was uh, taking into account. Yeah, great stuff here. Let's move on. Um, crowd simulation, uh, Vinicius. And... Uh, it's uh, 1 minute 20? 1 minute 20, really? Okay. Uh, some building. Are they uh, golem made buildings? Yeah, I think some so building. because uh, he, he asked uh, how to convert a building. So. Uh huh. Let's see. So let's uh, play this one. So we had birds. And oh, and we've got PLE uh, contamination, so I can probably tell that uh, the buildings were not golem else. We'll probably have some orange ones. So car sim, pedestrian sim. And uh, yeah, a couple of shot compositions here, uh, a couple of uh, different camera angles. And I can tell there are some custom characters. Oh, okay. That was unexpected. And there's music. I'm not sure if uh, if uh, you guys uh, have my computer audio. You know, it, it reminds me about the, the commercial from uh, the meal. Yeah, that's, how, what, that's what I was about to say. It's, uh, we had uh, the, the meal, the people at the meal, they made a, a commercial for... I can't remember who uh, ran the jewel. Uh, it was a yeah, it was a music video actually. Uh, it was a music yeah, it was yeah, a music yeah. video uh, for run the jewels and uh, they were uh, dancing in the streets and they extended those dancers. Well, okay, so there's a lot of stuff going on here. You've got so apparently buildings not, but you've got those flocking stuff here. Um, there's probably some scale um, freedom here. I guess the the birds are super big compared to the to the buildings. 
And um, yeah, that's too bad. There is a, a collision. I'm not sure if you were able to put that, uh, maybe that uh, building into the collision detector. Uh, maybe it has, as it had hard edges, uh, the collision wouldn't be so nice, but um, you can also have a proxy, uh, like you can put a cylinder around uh, your building. So uh, the characters uh, will avoid it because it's, uh, you know, smoother. Uh, so here you've got traffic with a lot of cars, um, different diversity on the cars. You can see there are some taxis here and uh, some uh, regular cars. Uh, people on the sidewalks, they're, uh, what, I can what I can say from the first snap is uh, they're all walking into the same direction. Like other people on one sidewalk working one way and uh, other people on the other sidewalk working the other way. Maybe it's maybe that's expected. Maybe that's part of the art direction. And there's also some uh, really wide uh, scaling uh, uh, diversity here. So you've got some characters really small and some characters super big. But once again, it's maybe a choice. Um, also, probably maybe an issue with ground adaptation. Uh, maybe the terrain was not uh, set properly. And uh, there's some custom characters, right? You've been converting. Uh, I can tell that guy here is not from the Golem character pack. So you've been converting your own character. And uh, OK, we've got that dancing in the streets. So it means that uh, probably, yeah, OK. There's also motion conversion, retargeting on characters. Uh, that's just too bad that uh, you didn't install the license and put some nice uh, texture on the environment, else there would have been uh, that shot would have been pretty nice. And you've got, uh, yeah, characters on the the balcony, uh, probably some scale, uh, also some scale issue here. Uh, the character looks really big compared to the balcony. Uh, but if you want us to unlock uh, that uh, that uh, scene, uh, let us know. And we, yeah, and we've got people on other parts. So that means that you computed the nav mesh. I'm curious how you put those guys up because, uh, you know, usually, when you compute the nav mesh, you only have access to the streets. So is there a nav mesh here or is that like manual population on a specific terrain? Vertex wing, okay, gotcha. And uh, pretty great, yeah, okay, it's a good approach. Uh, so vertex wing mean that uh, probably you selected the vertices and created a component based. Um, because uh, if you, you know, if you use nav mesh, um, what you end up with is usually the biggest uh, you know, connection zone. Um, you know, if you think about it, um, in such an environment, there's plenty of surfaces the characters could walk on. I mean, this here could be a zone where you could populate your character. Uh, it's it's totally valid in terms of slopes, in terms of uh, number of steps or whatever. So uh, by default, what we do is we, when you compute the, um, the nav mesh, we only keep the greatest zone, which is connected all together. So you don't have the ground, the, the roof, you don't have the internal of the buildings, you don't have all those balconies. Uh, there is an option which uh, within the nav mesh computation allows you to tell that you want to have multiple surfaces and not only just the greatest one. Uh, and uh, and uh, that will allow to populate more uh, spaces. But yes, I really like uh, uh, that shot here. Uh, okay, next one. Uh, crowd test, Adrian Pelka. And uh, okay, it's uh, one minute. Oh, damn, that's long shots. You guys uh, enjoyed rendering crowds, apparently. So let's watch it once. There's a lot of stuff. Oh, wait. Oh, so it's okay. It's breaking. It's broken into multiple uh, pieces here. Uh, you know, I like the uh, close simulation on this one. Damn. Well, I was kind of surprised that it moved to something else. So let me check this again. There's a lot of stuff. The composition is super, super nice. And OK, we switch to, OK, let's watch that. Yeah, the close sim is amazing here. So uh, yeah, a lot of work setting dudes up, right? Uh, using uh, uh, is, uh, so is Adrian around? OK. No, I don't think so. We switch to something else. And we've got running custom characters. OK, let's. Go through this once. Okay, there's, it's like a full crowd reel, uh, ready to be submitted. Uh, that archery scene with planting arrows here again. Okay, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, that's a custom character, it's not the golem horse. Okay, that's totally custom characters here. 
Okay, that's that's a lot of work. So let's review this uh, kind of apocalypse scene. Um, so you've got, so first you've got a custom character. So that means uh, Adrian here uh, apparently converted his hound mesh and his own skeleton, made it a golem asset, uh, also set up the physics for this. He also had like a, a collider, which is dynamic in the scene and the characters are reacting to this. That car is probably keyframed and uh, the characters are reacting to that uh, shape here. So he probably like uh, may approximate uh, his car with plenty of different crowd rigid bodies. Um, it looks like, uh, it looks to me the scene is, um, it's maybe like a slow motion. The frequency of the scene, like the physics is running like super uh, low, slow. So I probably change the frequency so we can, you know, enjoy more the details. So you've got collisions here, you've got diversity, you've got some physics explosions. Um, yeah, a lot of work here. Then you've got another custom characters, which has this time close simulation. So this is exactly what I was saying, you know, where we were uh, going through the physics setup. Like the physics setup, it obviously is not as cool as uh, in terms of quality, you never get as as, as many stuff as you will get into Vellum or whatsoever, but this is running real time. Uh, and I guess even the scene after, which has a couple more characters was running real time. So it's not, you know, a perfect close sim, but I mean, for my eyes here, uh, so I'm not a close artist. Uh, well, I can tell it's, it looks terrific. I, I really love it. Uh, you know, you can tell it's not skinning for sure. And you also have some close sim on the, on the hat, on the scarf hat here. So yeah, it looks awesome. Uh, I like the um, composition of the character, uh, you know, walking with each other and talking to each other as well. So being converting his own motion, um, really great, uh, really great work here. So now you've got uh, scale variation with, uh, you know, character diversity and that same close setup running at the same time. So I guess it's more like a close test this is another uh, custom character. It's not part of uh, it's not part of the the Golem character pack, but um, looks super nice. A lot of diversity of animation. Some characters holding the shields up. So yeah, once again, it takes it took some time to convert his own characters. This is something more casual. Uh, we've been seeing this within the academy, but um, something less casual is that you can see the arrows are planting in the ground. The characters are holding their shields up. So probably a set bone behavior here to bring the, the shield up. Uh, and also is, um, is, is not been going the ragdoll way. You can see as soon as the characters get hit, they play that falling animation, but they still react to the ground. They still react to the other characters. So probably they're using, is using the local servo here. So it's not the full dynamic. It's the local servo way you're able to combine animations. So, here, there's a trigger, we change the animation and also um, play the physics. So you get the character falling and evolving. So yeah, I like, I like the, I really like this. So it's not just a ragdoll, it's uh, more than a ragdoll. Um, really impressive as well, converting your own quadruped character. So maybe it was inspired by the, the, the horse we provide, uh, but uh, really great work in terms of uh, bringing diversity in terms of textures bringing your own motion as well really great stuff it's too bad that uh, adrian is not connected to uh, you know share uh, his experience i can't really tell here if you've got some close sim i would say right now we don't have any uh i'm you know i really seen that skinning deformation here and they're probably having some close would have made something different and not even on the scarf hat here uh but yeah really impressive work and uh, in you know 10 days uh, putting along so many different stuff into the same shot. Um, yeah, really great stuff. And um, yeah, too bad uh, you're not connected. Uh, I really like this. Okay, let's move uh, to a, oh, you here. So, okay, let's uh, let's go back. So uh, I can't really remember uh, which questions I had. Probably, um, probably were there some close sim here and I couldn't spot it uh, within the horse. And uh, no problem. And uh, where does where does the assets come from? Is that something you uh, you had on your side uh, in your studio experience, or are they are they free assets uh, you take advantage of? Uh, yeah, let us know. So yes, it's my animation. So okay, well done. 
and well done converting all those characters by yourself. And uh, probably if you missed the, the start uh, of this, um, uh, well, first, it's really great job. And uh, I think we're recording this, so it will be on YouTube, so you can catch up uh, what we've been saying. Uh, so yeah, great, really great work uh, converting uh, your own characters and your own animation. Uh, so not finished yet. Um, so yeah, that's awesome. Keep us updated. I'm not sure if you are on the Discord, but uh, yeah, keep us updated with the new shots and uh, uh, you know if you uh, still if you guys still work on the, your shots and uh, make new projects even after the license um, uh, end date, we'll be happy to unlock the scenes for you or even provide uh, you know a license extension. Uh, so you can make a nice reel, but really looks like a nice reel. And, um, you know, even from this, uh, I'm sure you can send this to a couple of places. Uh, you probably get an interview, uh, from, from putting, uh, all those, uh, all those shots all together. So yeah, great work. Really well done. Uh, so let's move to, uh, next one, uh, crowd crab walk, uh, from Andrew. Uh, that's a 10 seconds. Yeah, I, I remember seeing this on the Discord and uh, I remember loving the asset and I still love it. Uh, okay, so we've got, well, first we've got a character which is completely unusual. It's a hate-legged uh, character here. Uh, so it means making a complete uh, skeleton mapping for this. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. is, is Andrew around? I'm not sure if it's... Um, uh, if the skeleton, the automatic skeleton mapping uh, worked out of the box, or if you had to remap those by your own, but it works super well. Uh, we can see some uh, character diversity here. Some uh, guys are wearing uh, different kind of shells on top of those, and uh, also obviously we have some shading diversity. Uh, so some characters being uh, blue, red, green. Uh, you could probably have provided like an, a, an, a procedural uh, diversity as well, where you just uh, vary it, uh, the, maybe just the, the U part of the color. So you can have, you know, a huge range of stuff. It's, it's such a shame that, so here means character conversion, motion conversion. Uh, I'm not sure how many motions are here. We've got a walking animation for sure. And we've got... Uh, it's probably part of the walking animation, like bringing your arms up. And uh, okay, and you got also that balancing. So I'm not sure how many animations are there. Are they mixed all together at different point or uh, are they just play with a start frame? What is just a shame is that uh, you didn't put this into a send environment with, you know, with bumpy or just a bumpy geometry, uh, probably. If, you, if you're not really good with texturing, uh, or with making environment, uh, just making a bumping environment and uh, enabling some 3D navigation because, um, so by default, Golem figures that uh, you want to adapt characters as you would adapt uh, human characters. So if the, the ground is different, we'll use the I keys uh, just to, to adapt to the ground. But when you've got a crab, you've got something which is adapted to the normal. So you don't want to have I keys who are taking um, the part for gravitation. You want to have the full body like you would have a car following the slope uh, the same way. So you want to use something we call 3D navigation, which is using the normal of the ground to adapt to it. So we'll see probably if some people uh, took advantage of this during uh, during those sessions. But if you do this with a bumpy environment, you've got a pretty great uh, stuff. And uh, I'll probably tell also that all the characters, they're oriented the same way and they're all going into the same direction. So uh, maybe... Um, tell a story. If you want all the characters to go in one direction, tell a story regarding this. Maybe they are fleeing something. But uh, here I can tell it's a grid with probably almost the same animation being uh, applied. And that's too bad because there's so much work here applied for uh, uh, converting your own character, converting your own motion, making the diversity. Let's add more behaviors to make it like really, really sweet. So a lot of you guys converting your own characters. Uh, I'm pretty impressed by this. So uh, let's move to the next one. Uh, Crowd Setup Golem Academy from uh, Boris. And uh, from the first image, I can tell that I've seen at least some work in progress of this uh, within the Discord. So uh, let's play this once. And uh, let's see what we got. Yeah, we've got awesome shot composition here. Uh, 
having yeah for sure having some landscape and some geometry to sell your crowds really help um and uh yeah you've got a lot of stuff here you've got those walking guys the sitting guys the camera the camera is super sweet uh helping selling the shots and uh i okay kind of cut way too i would have loved to see more um so what do we have we've got first i can tell there's a custom character here that you converted is it your okay and i can see boris is around uh yeah super work amazing work and um uh so here the character where does it come from is it something you had on your side and you did is it uh um a uh, custom character that you downloaded uh from uh from any source okay that's a das character and what about the animation here is it uh, uh was the animation was coming along with it uh and okay so that's her locomotion works super well on that character um is there it it looks to me that there is some diversity uh but i cannot really tell where i come from but it looks to me that the characters are slightly different from, even if they're soldiers and we expect they're dressed the same way. Uh, I have the feeling that there is something. Um, could the, uh, could the, the wrist band, could be, are they of different colors? Are they different flags? Maybe here I can see there's uh, maybe a run flag here or maybe something like, yeah, okay, great. There is indeed diversity, texture diversity. And there is there some geometry diversity? Uh, I can see the whole wearing, are they? No, they're not all wearing the gun the same way, right? You've got uh, different positions for uh, the gun on their back. Yeah, okay. Three helmets, two rifle position. Yeah, and you know what? It's it's super, yeah, it's super, it's super subtle, but just by looking at it, I can tell they're not entirely the same, even if you just, you know, um, change slightly the textures and uh, the gun position. I can tell they're uh, different. I really like also the sitting guys here. It, it really looks like, I mean, the, the shot tells a story. It tells the story of probably hand of a war, hand of a battle, some characters sitting up and uh, rest, having some rest. I'm not even sure if they're animated. Probably it's just a static posture, but you don't really, you know, you don't really care because uh, you've got those moving characters which are coding your eyes. You've got that formation in the background which you know will turn and follow. And this is exactly why I wanted to have more at the end. I wanted to see them if they were about to turn or if they're just, uh, they're just probably following a line, right? And uh, they're not going to turn after the end of that shot. But still, the camera works. Uh, uh, yeah, it's really amazing here. Um, other cars, um, Golem made as well, or just uh, you just uh, put them here. And uh, and uh, place them manually. It will be a super sweet addition if they were okay. If they were uh, uh, just added, so okay, they're just put random. Uh, but yeah, you know, you could have just uh, put a, a bone into those and uh, instantiate those and having some shading variation in it. And it, um, well, that shot is super nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, I would totally buy uh, that shot. A uh, lot of work, you know, locomotion work. Some some sitting here. Uh, yeah, a lot of really nice and subtle work. Uh, I really liked it. And also really having the shot, the camera telling a story about the shot really helps uh, selling it. Yeah, well done. Awesome, awesome work, man. Uh, let's move. Next one, uh, Dimo Rio crowd uh, from uh, Jordan. And okay, it's one minute 15. So probably have, as it's called, uh, real. I probably expect to see plenty of different stuff. So we've got giant guy hitting cars and uh, we've got soldiers being hit by cars. Pretty unusual uh, with uh, detaching props. So let's go through this. And uh, it's not even a play blast. It's a, it's a screen record, right? It's uh, probably using uh, OBS or something to record. Uh, okay, because the, the scene is moving here. So from another point of view, we can see the setup. We totally helped, you know, to... Uh, 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 did it at the army. Okay, well done. That that helps. Uh, that helps not having time, I guess. Uh, and we've got a stadium with some clothes. 
So uh, that gives you some op opportunities, you know, to uh, now make the render of this. And uh, you've got like a medieval uh, fight with horses and, uh, and some physics at the end. And uh, also some harmony moving informations here and uh, moving forward with the horses. Well, a lot of stuff here. So uh, let's talk about uh, each shot separately. So yeah, it's, it's quite crazy, but I like it. Uh, and there was a, probably a frame uh, glimpsing here. Um, what I would probably improve uh, with really minimal effort is probably um, look at uh, the placement and uh, probably changing the radius of my population tool, making sure that uh, you know cars are not um, hitting each other. I can see you were uh, using the different rendering types we had. So you, you bring some taxi into the scene and uh, turn those guys into physics. Uh, I was about to check if they are colliding with the buildings, uh, but uh, they are just that's only go through those buildings. So um, super, you know, super quick addition you can do is probably change the radius of your uh, population tool, so you don't have collisions. And also, not having collisions when you start the physics will help having a great, uh, you know, better uh, physics reaction to uh, the characters. Also, um, if you want to have some collisions with those guys here. Uh, you can just select those boxes and turn them into a crowd rigid body. So I'm not sure if we saw them uh, within the academy. Else, we've got plenty of you know short tutorials, three four minutes, which tells you exactly how that works. This is the same way. Um, uh, in one of your previous sequence, the character was falling onto a bumpy ground and not going through the ground. That's because the ground was turned into a specific collider, so the characters will not go through this. And uh, just by adding those two stuff, you would really have something, uh, you know, being really nice. The physics looks uh, pretty nice. I get, well, it's the default settings we had. Maybe breaking uh, the characters apart would help as well. Then we've got probably something also like physics collision trigger here. So as soon as character hits each other, uh, you got collision reaction. Um, and, you know, we can see some cars going through uh, the character, so probably increasing the frequency of your scene helps also having a better collision uh, because that's the reason for this is because the car are going super fast and uh, the characters don't have the time to avoid uh, and react and having the right physics uh, reaction to this. We've got some props detaching, some uh, some usage of the detached behavior, so it's really nice, you know, combination of what we've seen during different classes combined together into the same scene. Uh, you know, with some nice environment. It would make a really pretty scene actually having some soldiers being hit by car. Pretty surreal, uh, but I'm sure it would look great. And we've got this from uh, another angle. I'm kind of surprised not seeing the characters reacting to the car once they're onto the ground. Maybe they're unphysicalized. Uh, are the cars um, colliders? Are they uh, turn into uh, kinematic uh, rigid bodies? Uh, I, I guess so. This is probably how you, you had the, the collision reaction. Uh, we've got a stadium stuff. That's pretty casual, something we did uh, during the academy here with some close sim combined at the same time. And uh, we also have some main New York characters here. Uh, so two different types. And also probably to improve that shot, you can probably add a prop uh, to those hands, uh, having a spear. So it will be also a nice exercise you know, to see how you can uh, change a character, like uh, modify a character which already exists and bring a new prop into this. And uh, having some spear reaction uh, as soon as the character is hit, is hit by a spear, having it reacting to this. And uh, also probably detaching, you can, the same way you, you use the detach to detach the bones, you can use also the detach to detach the character from uh, the scene. And some army, it's, you know, it's super casual. It's always nice to have a great army shot, something like this. When you think about it, it's super simple in terms of behavior. You just place your characters and uh, play one, two different animations. Uh, that, that view also helps, uh, you know, having a, a great uh, cell of the shot. Uh, so having this being rendered with maybe probably another legion here at the back would be, would make a really awesome shot with, uh, you know, nice environment. Uh, you'll get something really nice. Uh, but yeah, great work assembling so many various stuff into uh, one minute 15 video. It's not rendered, so that helps uh, because rendering one minute is, is really, I know it's a pain. So let's move. Uh, we've got uh, Duck Army Crowd uh, from uh, Alexi. Sounds like a really French 
name, uh, or probably maybe Montreal uh, name, but probably French. So let's see what we got. And we've got sound. Okay, I've seen that one. I, I remember the craziness of that shot. And I remember also you are uh, converting that character here. Why does the tree doesn't have any leaves on it? I'm kind of puzzled by those. Uh, <laughs> even it's not really the, the purpose of the crowds. I'm puzzled by those trees without any leaves on it. So, okay, it's crazy shot going on here, like a duck invasion with some uh, big duck. Would, would even look like a fluid simulation when you think about it. So um, Alexi is around. So let's see uh, what kind of setup is here. I guess it's a, so you've got a nav mesh uh, probably here uh, where you provided some obstacles detection, probably the trees and the rocks. So this is uh, probably why they're uh, moving away from the trees or maybe you painted, maybe you painted trajectories or you painted the vector field to drive those. So, okay, nav mesh here. So nav mesh with a go-to target somewhere here. Uh, and uh, I can't really tell if there is some locomotion, if they're animated. There's probably one or two animation. Uh, duck running inside the nav mesh and bugging. Yeah, okay, I can probably tell what's going on here, uh, especially looking at how fast they move. I think you are not using locomotion here. You're probably using a motion behavior in your animation as a translate. So this is why the characters probably collide with each other. And uh, this is also pro probably why uh, you have uh, this problem. I think it's a question which was asked a lot. We've got some people who wanted to have crawling characters and uh, we are trying to use the locomotion for that. So I probably, uh, I, I, Alex, if you don't uh, mind uh, writing this down, uh, I'll probably take some time at the end to show how you can use one animation without locomotion, but still be able to have a nice collision avoidance. So if you want to improve that shot, okay. uh, you could do this. Uh, it looks like you've got some, uh, so first you've been converting your own characters and your own motion. So kudos for that. It's always, I know it's always like a big, uh, a big deal. Uh, you've been doing some shading variations. Some characters I can see have different textures, even if it looks mini white, uh, probably, uh, you can, you know, balance this and provide more textures. And uh, you know what? I, so yeah, we've got some collision uh, issues here uh, when the terrain is smoothed. So probably it's a smooth geometry, but uh, what is detected as a terrain is probably not smoothed. So, um, uh, you know, probably uh, smooth the geometry, like adding polygons into the geometry would help rather than using the smooth feature just for the display. Uh, this is, so what Golem use for terrain adaptation is the actual geometry without the smoothing. So this is why sometimes you've got some differences where the characters get uh, get into. And I guess this is why you had, uh, you know, um, uh, characters here going through it. And would, what would make that shot perfect? Because having duck going uh, down the hill is already perfect in terms of shots, but having flying ducks, like you have those ducks, uh, you know, uh, running down, but having some flying ones up, ha, you know, coming at the same time um, would make it even crazier. But yeah, with some trees, some better ground adaptation uh, would make a perfect shot. And I like having the sound of, I like the sound of having, uh, I like the sound of having ducks into a shot as well. Uh, to make them fly, I need to make them wings. Yeah. Oh, okay. They don't have wing. Uh, they don't have wing skin separately, uh, or uh, had it as different meshes. Um, the characters. It's okay, that that makes it more difficult to have uh, flying ducks. Then. Okay, let's move to the next one. Um, final project, uh, Lisa. Uh, so it's thirteen seconds. Let's rewind this back, and. Oh, I can see some moving stuff into the background. So probably spiders. Is that it? Uh, is Lisa around? Uh, let's yep. see if I can. Uh, if I can, yeah. Brighten this up, so we can see exactly what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Looks like I'm having spiders uh, in the front here, in the back, and uh, they're actually. It looks like they're avoiding collisions as well. Okay, I can see Lisa is here. So, okay, they go around rocks. 
Uh, are they animated? I can't really, you know, I can't really spot any animation. So what are they? They are spiders. It looks like they're sided. They're on the side. They're not having the right, or may maybe they're beetles or kind of insects. So uh, you can see they're kind of eating. So we've got a wave of character. We've got some characters hitting the 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 rocks here. Not sure if uh, it's a physical collision or a nav mesh collision. I think you are using probably a motion behavior here, right? They're supposed to be animated. I can't really spot this because they're maybe um, back in the background. But okay, they're cockroach cockroaches. Gotcha. So home character here, are the, are the legs mapped? Are all the legs animated? It's too bad that they're so far that we can't, you know, we can't really enjoy uh, all the, the work you put into this. Is there some geometry uh, diversity or some shading diversity here as well? So you've got a wave uh, and uh, yeah, I'm, puzzled. I'm just waiting for uh, answers uh, here. So they go around Roxas, so probably nav mesh go to uh, navigation, like a setup we've seen, uh, some flat terrain here, some nice environment textures, which really helps. Uh, also setting the shot, we've got some people, some characters here in the foreground. I would have loved to see them, you know, closer to the camera uh, to see how they mapped out there into the right direction. From what I can tell, uh, I'm not really sure, but I'd say maybe they're not oriented the right way. It looks like to me they're, they're sliding uh, on their side. So I just wait, uh, yeah, let, let me know. Um, having characters maybe closer, having maybe a moving camera to help selling the shots or maybe being within the cockroaches, like having a camera in, right in the middle of it to see how they move uh, would probably help uh, making the shot more dynamic and see what's going on and, and helping selling the shots. Feel free to provide the answers while I'm, uh, I'm moving to the next video. I want to uh, know more exactly about uh, uh, the assets and what's going on here. And uh, maybe let's turn off. Uh, it looks like I had. Uh, sorry for the previous guy, previous one, guys. I had uh, some uh, some uh, lightness adjustment, so maybe your shots were looking lighter than uh, what you expected. Oh, okay. Um, fishes. That's great. Uh, fish golden crowd. Um, uh, golden crowd renting. So let's see. It's uh, fifteen seconds. I love those fish behaviors. And okay, they turn into, damn, okay. Well, so we've got, apparently we've got some, I don't know, something like target fleeing as soon as the the balls are, uh, those small balls are moving into the kind of aquarium, the characters are like moving away from it and also they are attracted to it at some point. Um, those, those animations are super neat. I like I like it. So here, uh, custom characters being converted from scratch with a really nice animation, which is actually in sync with the speed of the characters. Uh, I can see it's slowing down. The animation is slowing down and speeding up as soon as the character changes. So probably some locomotion here. Uh, at some point, the characters turn into, I'm not sure, planets? I, I could like spot a planet, like a Saturn shape. Let's see, let's pose. Yeah, okay, they're turning into like satellites, planets, some some cosmos stuff. Uh, so yeah, super, I'm, I'm super surprised. So probably here the characters get killed at some point and they are emitting uh, more golem characters. It's, it's too bad that, uh, uh, it's too bad that the artist is not here. And hey, Nico, I just noticed that uh, William is with us. Ah, I can see him. Hey, William. Hey, guys. How are you doing? How are you doing? Good, and you? I'm fine. We're fine. Uh, you had uh, some time to have lunch? Yeah, just finished it, actually. Okay. So um, <laughs> how long do you have in front of you? A uh, couple of hours, maybe. A couple of hours? Come on. Yeah. Really? I well, freed my afternoon for you guys. So uh, no, okay. Should well, be okay. Thank you so much <laughs> for that. Um, so, yeah, we're joined by William. I kind of... Um, uh, introduce him before he was here. Uh, so William is a uh, crowd department supervisor at uh, Meta Studio, and those guys are hiring, right? You are hiring still. Yep. 
still. Okay, these guys are hiring for crowds. <laughs> uh, so yeah, he's not really here, you know, to just enjoy uh, the the view. Maybe he's uh, here to uh, find some talents around. So uh, we've been uh, going through uh, some videos here, and uh, maybe you've uh, read uh, William's profile on the website. We've been doing a crowd artist story with him. Uh, so uh, how long have you been a crowd TD, William? Five, six years? Mm, a little more, uh, more, even like seven or eight now. Okay. I've started in uh, 2014, so. Okay, yeah. Yeah, seven. That's seven so. years. Okay, time fly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, William <laughs> is uh, graduated from uh, the Is Art School in France. Uh, we met uh, while he was a student here. I had a, uh, a crowd session there, a two days uh, session there. And maybe also uh, Michael from here was here from uh, yep. the Yeah. So that the course was, was yeah. shared beyond, uh, between me and a crowd TD from uh, a studio at the time who were doing this. And uh, then William made his, uh, uh, his uh, school project uh, with, with some crowd. We made a crowd school project and uh, was hired at uh, Animation Studio. Which one was it? The first one, the first place you were Studio Ari. Yeah, Studio Ari. Yeah. Then you moved to Fortige, then you moved to Micros Animation, and then uh, Method Studio. I'll probably show yeah. your uh, school stuff afterwards. I figured it was not on the website, and uh, I'll probably share it afterwards, if you don't mind. Sure, have it no problem. So yeah, we've been reviewing some of uh, the works, uh, so you you catch uh, the train. Uh, feel free to uh, you know share uh, your point, and uh, probably we'll go back to the previous ones uh, we went through if you got some times at the end, uh, so you can also see those. Uh, so yeah, we had a a pretty uh, pop fishes uh, stuff, surreal pop fishes stuff, uh, but super sweet, uh, super sweet work. Okay, let's move uh, to the next one, Golem Academy. Final assignment from Adriano. It's uh, fifty five seconds. Okay, let's see that. So and there's some sound, so I'm not sure if the sound is shared. So we're gonna uh, we usually try watch it once. Uh, okay, and we've got some breakdown, so that's gonna help uh, bringing uh, the stuff. So yeah, we're usually watching once and uh, you know make some comments afterwards. Uh, so it, it's actually great uh, seeing the viewport and the behaviors and uh, seeing the entities being colored to uh, help setting the shot for sure. Oh, and it's yeah, it's totally great. Uh, showing that you've been converting characters making some diversity yeah okay i love it it's a great way to put out a shot actually uh, the shading the geometry damn the, the crowd shot should be longer uh all that work you should you should make more it looks like a it looks like a borderland kind of shading with some toon shading i'm curious how that was rendered uh um i'm not sure if uh uh, Adriano is around. He is around. Okay, so that's Arnold shading here, and uh, you were using Arnold Toon shaders. So was Borderland an inspiration, or that's just me uh, making connection where there aren't any? So we've got plenty of different motions here going on. A uh, lot of diversity. So and a lot of different characters. Uh, there are some bigger characters here. So where does the concept come from? Is it like a personal project you are developing and uh, you wanted to put some crowds into this? So terrain here, uneven terrain. So uh, uh, bringing this into Golem so you can see the characters are adapting. Uh, it's really nice seeing the different types here so we can see the bigger characters here. We have, uh, so in red, we've got the blue characters, which apparently have a locomotion and they're moving forward the crowd, which is pretty hard to do, actually, having like static crowds and having people moving uh, within it. Uh, and uh, having that view really helps uh, selling the shot and selling the work. So you've been converting your own animations and your own locomotions for uh, that shot here. Yeah, I can. Yeah, okay, so the behaviors are actually shared. So let me uh, check those. So uh, navigation, locomotion, go to. So that's probably um, the blue guys there. Motion and adapt grant, that's, uh, yeah, okay, it's, uh, I've got uh, color codes around. So that was the, the red color guys. You can see, yep, yeah, uh, grant adaptation with nice eye key. Uh, and the locomotion come from Golem and some motions from you. 
well done converting all those characters. Uh, they are like two or three different characters with a lot of diversity. Uh, yeah, great job converting this and uh, making all that diversity. Uh, now you've done all that work, you need to make more shots of those. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, you plan to uh, create more, but uh, you should totally make more. William, any uh, any uh, uh, advice, maybe how to improve the shot or stuff that you like? Um, I really like the fact that you use tune shaders. Uh, this is something that I've never seen elsewhere in Crowd, at least. Yeah, me neither. Uh, it's pretty interesting to to see how well it works. Actually, I'm really surprised about it. Um, on the Golem side, it's amazing that you used so many different rigs and character variations. Um, with the terrain, with locomotion, it's great to see all those different behaviors and um, and rigs overall. So you've made the the, the full crowd package, uh, if I can say that, with the asset conversion, uh, different use of motions, different use of characters, uh, even an event terrain. That's great. Yeah, As that's uh, said, all, the, all the odd parts combined in one shot. Absolutely. As Nicolas said, now you have to do more shots because, yeah, so so much work. You have yes. to go totally. <laughs> much deeper now. We want to see more. Yeah, I, I also do want to see more. Yeah, true. So much, so much uh, work into this. You have to. I mean, you spend so much time <laughs> preparing these assets. You need to create more of those. Make some physics with those and. Uh, Mm -hmm. so, Definitely. Great work. Uh, so next shot is uh, Mattia, uh, and the shot is called uh, Golem Academy Crowd B Ive, and uh, well, I didn't, uh, I didn't need the title to figure this out. Uh, and uh, video is six seconds, and I do love the composition of this. Damn. Wait a minute. This. So okay, apparently. Uh, is it like a, uh, is Mattia around? Uh, just to see if uh, 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 it's worth asking questions or uh, if I just uh, ask questions in the, in the void. I think so, he's around. Let's see. Um, I'll tell, apparently it's a custom asset here. Uh, it's not the Golem asset for sure. It's, uh, I think it's a custom asset and there's so many stuff going on. So you've got flocking bees. Uh, with uh, motion blur. Uh, and yeah, by the way, I could tell, well, now I can tell there's motion blur on that shot, but I think not of you guys activated motion blur. Uh, but it's also great, uh, you know, to have motion blur really helps sending the shot. Uh, so we've got floating bees. You've got perching bees. I could spot some bees perching. Yeah, uh, that guy just perched onto uh, uh, that nice uh, wood box here. And I've got characters walking on top of each other. Uh, is that using the physics uh, system or is it just a different terrain and you just uh, act the system here? So am I correct? You've got perching bees, you've got uh, a custom assets. Is there fur on the characters? It looks like uh, they're kind of have a furry thorax, but uh, I'm not sure. Is there a way to zoom in VLC? Or at least there's some work on the texture to make it uh, okay. The BF fur, okay. And the, is it a custom? Damn. Okay, you went really for the the crazy package with fur and uh, I don't know hundreds of bees at the same time with depth of field for the rendering. Well, I really like the story of that shot, and I really like uh, the different behaviors. I like the photorealistic approach as well. Uh, really great work with the shading, the texturing of the environment. Uh, works well, works super well. William, uh, any, uh... yeah, it's a really believable shot. I mean, we have bees that act like bees should act. We have flying bees, we have uh, perched bees, we even have bees walking on top of our bees on the hive. That's a great shot. And as Nicola said, the composition is on point. Um, Great, great shot and great use of Golem as well with the fur because even us in production, we don't use fur that much, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> so that's pretty amazing. Uh, excellent work. Good work. I, I mm. can totally tell that the fur is adding, even if it's subtle, I can tell it's really adding something to sell 
I mean, when you pose this and you look at it, having the motion blur on the wings, having the fur mm -hmm. on the thorax, you can tell it's not a texture, it's not geometry only, it's something more, it really helps selling uh, the quality of the asset. And I really like also posing any frame and you can see the bees, they are really in, in different position, really believable position regarding the way you fly, uh, having the nice uh, wing uh, blur on it. Um, and you know, some are really, um, they kind of, uh, I don't know the word for that, but they have different angles. Some are really like head down, head up. Um, yeah, really, really great work here. I can just tell that the perching is a bit maybe abrupt. Sometimes uh, I can see they're kind of teleport. So probably you can change uh, the landing time. I guess you are using the perching behavior here. So maybe you can uh, change the perching time to have them uh, perch maybe, uh, maybe slower and maybe change the animation at that point as well. So um and uh okay and uh i can see that matthias tells that he, he wanted to create a complete asset so uh you converted your own asset yourself so really great work for this uh i'm i'm really impressed that so many of you guys decided to convert your own assets uh, rather than using the, the the assets from the character pack it's really adding it's adding a layer of difficulty to the to the work but it's um um you know it's really big uh big achievement Okay, let's move to uh, next one. So Golem Academy uh, TD um, and from Rob, uh, Rob. Uh, and let's play it once. It's 11 seconds here. And uh, we've got a stadium of soldiers. Oh, we've got multiple shots. Uh, we've got a charging army here and we've got some cars. Okay, <laughs> that's, the, <laughs> that's unexpected, but Probably you wanted to make the full stuff. You wanted to show the traffic and show the battle uh, stuff as well. Um, so yeah, let's uh, ha probably if you've got some time to add some environment uh, would really help selling the shot. Having a stadium with uh, soldiers really help as well. It's it's pretty okay. So that's something we've seen into the academy, uh, but apply with another asset. So you've got the Mexican wave. Probably not adapted to all the assets. You can see some characters holding that banner in a really non-realistic way. So you can you know, clean this uh, by changing the uh, rendering type repartition. We've got a Mexican wave, which is, which is apparently triggered by uh, some geometry here. Some army information, casual stuff. You always need to have an army information uh, shot into your reel, which is actually one of the first shots you did uh, with him for your project. Uh, That's some, right. <laughs> some Golem characters running, and that's too bad. It's cutting before they're actually charging, but I know that charging is a hard part. Uh, so mm. he's a uh, he's, uh, rub around. So here it's using the, the assets from the character pack. So you may want to you know, work on uh, the asset assignment, make sure that the right guys are doing the right uh, animation with the right assets. You know, that guy running with that banner and going into a fight is probably not, uh, you know, the best uh, scenario situation. Uh, so you probably want to, you know, change your weight variations here. And uh, for the rest, probably having a, a nice uh, environment, working a bit on, on camera, and uh, you get uh, something proper. Uh, anything you want to uh, add, William, regarding um, how you can sell this shot uh, a bit better? Uh, no, you're right. A better environment would be great, especially for the roads, um, because having cars driving around is okay, it's <laughs> fine. But without any roads, it's hard to see why they are turning, if they are turning in the correct crossing, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So having a bit of roads could greatly help in that case. Um, and yeah, besides that, as Nicolas said, a little, bit, um, sorry, a little better environment overall. And yeah, and try to put a little bit of physics. Uh, it could be great, especially with sure. this charge. It can be nice and fun to, to have in a demo reel. But otherwise, you have a lot of behaviors there. So it's nice use of Golem. We see that you understood uh, pretty, pretty much all the different mechanics that you may encounter as a crowd artist with charge army marching, Mexican waves, uh, vehicle traffic. So just a little bit of um, finishing touch and it will be fine. Absolutely. Okay, let's move to, uh, so Golem assignment from uh, Francesco. And uh, let's see if uh, Francesco is around. So it's a 11 seconds shot. Oh, okay, wait a minute, DLC is uh, ruining it. I'm really sorry for that. <laughs> 
Uh, and uh, just having it, you know, rendered with nice environment and texture brings so much more uh, into this. Uh, that shot is too short. <laughs> okay, a lot of stuff going on. I like the I like the camera move. I also like the depth of field, even if you know, even if it's uh, kind of kills that we can't see the crowd. But it's uh, clearly artistic decision here. So you've got an uneven terrain. With uh, mm -hmm. so this is using golem characters, probably the animation maybe from the character pack, and really nice work on the environment. You've got some physics reaction and some triggering of animation. Yeah, I can tell it's uh, the battle animation here. Uh, yeah, I really like the the charge in the middle here. Uh, probably I'll have the same comments uh, than uh, the previous shot. I can spot some characters which are fighting with banners. So <laughs> that guy here is like hitting the other. The other people with banners, so probably not the most appropriate uh, uh, geometry assignment here. And uh, yeah, I like having archer archery uh, people here. Maybe some issues with scale. They really look the they look pretty small compared to uh, pretty compared to mm -hmm. those towers. But maybe that's a, a big tower. And yeah, horses in the middle uh, fighting with characters. And yeah, if you pay attention, you can spot some people doing some weird stuff in the middle of nowhere. But, you know, when the camera moves and you just look at the shot once with the depth of field and the motion blur, uh, you kind of skip it. You just have that impression of battles and that's exactly what you need. Um, and yeah, I can spot also that horse being standing still in the <laughs> middle <laughs> that I would have probably <laughs> removed in layout at some point. But mm -hmm. I really like the composition of the shot. Yeah, you know, they look yeah. like they are toys. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the, I like that. The, yeah. yeah, the shallow depth of field really, yeah, really helps selling it as you know, yeah, probably toys. Maybe that was the that was what uh, what was expected. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, Francesco is around. Apparently not. Uh, yeah, William, go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, as you said, that's pretty good. Um, I would uh, have deleted the broken characters. Uh, in layout, I use layout a little bit more to fix some errors down there that you may have in simulation. But overall, it's a good shot. Uh, I mean, battle shots are hard to do. So mm -hmm. props to you for going into that direction, with especially with archery and cavalry and charges. What I would uh, change a bit is the, um, the, the tilt shift effect, just lowering it a bit bit more because I want to see what's uh, behind the, the foreground, like all the background <laughs> battle uh, would have been nice to see a little bit more of that because we sure. can see that there are a lot of characters fighting there. So might be sure. interesting to see that. But overall, yeah, besides the, the banners and uh, some characters in typos like uh, somewhere down there, it's a good shot, good composition, good camera. And yeah, good shot overall. Yeah, when you pose like on this frame here, you can see there are so, so many yeah. people in the background that we can't really enjoy. And it, they are moving for sure. And uh, yeah, it's it's too bad that we don't see those guys. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that, that point here where all the characters are converging and fighting with each other, it looks like there's also some close animation on the banner here. It's fully not a skinning the formation. So yeah, there's many stuff here going on. It's rendered, so probably took ages to render. Uh, as well so yeah well done well done and uh yeah it it doesn't just there are just few things to move to you know to uh to fix that that typos character here and that will really make a, an awesome battle shot and those are not really easy to get right so yeah mm -hmm. slight uh slight usage of layout and show us more the work you've been doing uh, all those characters in the background will probably want to see them uh let's move to uh the next one uh, we've got Golem Assignment by a Mike. Uh, and Mike said, that's me. It's very broken. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> uh, let's run it once. And okay, I can, <laughs> I can tell why you're <laughs> saying it's broken. Uh, well, I'm, I'm surprised what's, what are those flying, that, those, those black characters here? They look like black lady characters, but uh, maybe geometry... The skinning was not uh, performing properly. And yeah, okay, there's also probably a couple of uh, ground adaptation issues here and there, right? I can see some characters popping. Uh, 
So importing characters, I don't know what happened to the shaders. <laughs> okay, that's too bad. You can check uh, probably into the render um, into the render logs. If the shaders not here, if they're not supported, you'll probably have the right messages. Or maybe they're, yeah, maybe they're not importing into the scene. Uh, so we have uh, cars and uh, the cars, they're stopping for the pedestrian, right? Yeah, there are. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, we've got a lot of behaviors, actually. We've got uh, characters on sidewalks. It's pretty dense, so it's never easy to make some dense crowds like this. Uh, characters going into different directions here. You bring both the man character and the woman character, and you probably share it some assets you made your home uh i can spot yeah i can spot that guy here is not a golem character so you probably also converted your own character so well done converting your own characters and uh i guess that was also a a uh, a custom characters you converted that that one uh didn't want uh, pretty okay and i'm surprised about that flying tipos guy here <laughs> and those broken soldiers there uh, yeah, probably remove them uh, in layout could help uh, getting not distracted by the shots. And are they are they characters into uh, are they characters into the cars? It seems so. Yeah. Yeah, it seems I can so. See, yeah, I can see. I can see legs. a leg here and there. So, yeah. Uh, probably some posture correction to do. Uh, but well done. It's not it's not easy to do, and I think there are. Yeah, uh, I can see some heads. Uh, <laughs> So probably using the emit behavior here and the emitting characters into cars, it's 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 pretty it's pretty advanced setup when you think about it in terms of behaviors. There's a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just too bad that we get distracted with ground adaptation and those dancing broken soldiers. Mm -hmm. uh, but just reworking the shot, making a nice uh, probably environment and uh, and removing those guys in the middle of the road, and you can get a really nice stuff. Adding motion blur, depth of field, you know all the casual stuff, and you get a really awesome shot. Uh, because all the basics they're here. Or, I mean, all the or or the the base layers they're here. Now it's just refining until you get uh, you get it uh, nice and and nicely done. Mm -hmm. Go ahead uh, if you got anything to add, uh, William. Yeah, I agree. Uh, having streets that much populated is hard enough uh, on its own. So that's a good point that you chose to put populate that many characters here mm -hmm. uh, with this car traffic and these rules that uh, cars have to stop when they face uh, people and not uh, driving them through. So that's good behaviors and good use of, uh, I assume, channel ops or at least uh, basic rules. So as Nicolas said, uh, break the seed soldiers might work, but in a better shape and uh, yeah, as the other guy before, a little bit of polishing uh, on the scene, like having real uh, roads with um, better uh, environment could greatly send the mm -hmm. shot after fixing those uh, adaptation and breakdancing soldiers there and there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. There's a, I'm not sure if you're having the chat box uh, being open, William, yeah. but uh, yeah. okay. breakdancer when supposed to be soldiers. Uh, that's the, the comment <laughs> from Mike. Okay, so now I understand it more. No uh, worries. You lost the characters. Okay, where where did they <laughs> went? <laughs> uh, let's move to the next one. And oh, that's pretty interesting rendering uh, here. So, uh, Golem assignment from uh, uh, Nicola. And uh, he, is, uh, he is connected as well. So let's uh, run it once. Oh, wait a minute. I think my VLC, okay. Damn, okay. And uh, we've got uh, the Golem Arachnid Soldier from the character pack and some nice 3D navigation and characters changing and walking on walls. And oh, okay, and some physics falling and some more physics. Mm -hmm. Damn, sweet. Okay, let's go through this. So that's a pretty unusual shot because we haven't seen yet. This is probably the first time we're seeing 3D navigation. So what we, uh, when I speak about 3D navigation means that, you know, every single academy session we've been doing all the time, we had character evolving on a flat ground, which was either cars, soldiers, uh, humans. And here we've got characters which are changing surface. So they are starting from a floor then they are moving super nicely to uh, the wall. So I suspect you put some uh, round mesh here to help doing the really smooth transition. And well done, that's exactly the right way to do this. 
And uh, yeah, you've got character changing surface and they're changing their up vector. You know, humans uh, always have their up vector this way. That's the one that I was saying earlier when we were speaking about the crabs, crabs were going to change their y vector. And when you have something like this, uh, well, you, you need to deploy some tools that we haven't specifically seen. Where there were some tutorials that uh, probably uh, Nicolai could take advantage of. I really like all the characters, like, and they're, they are emitted, right? Because we can't see them from the beginning of the scene and I can see the, yeah, okay, they are emitted. So it means that uh, here probably is using the population tool with some emission attributes. So the characters are not here from frame one. They are emitting, uh, you know, during the time of uh, the whole simulation, which is quite long, by the way, 30 seconds. It's using one of the character of the character pack. It's the arachnid uh, character with some scaling here. And there's some physics here at the end where the characters fall back. I'm not sure if they're colliding with the environment. Uh, are they like uh, falling back onto the the book uh, store or on uh, those boxes at the end? I can't really spot. It looks like they're not really colliding with the, okay, yeah, they're not. Mm. Uh, oh, it's, it's such a shame they are not because it would just mm. be, you know, just the small details which would really help selling the stuff. Um, well, I like the story. Here, the shot tells the story. We've got that character kind of, uh, you know, um, 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 keyframe. Well, it's not keyframe. The stop motion animated, which is coming, fleeing, and all the characters uh, going after him and uh, climbing onto the walls. And and from some reason, they are falling. I like the story it tells, uh, and a uh, lot of different behaviors being deployed here. Really smooth transition between all the surfaces. So uh, super nice. Yeah, that, that's what I like. Uh, most there are the yeah. transitions between the different worlds. Yeah, absolutely. Um, is yeah. there is it using the UV pin behavior or is it uh, full 3D navigation that you used here? I'm uh, I'm quite curious. You could achieve probably the same results uh, with the two techniques, but uh, I'm just curious if you are using UV pin uh, behavior or if you're just using uh, uh, regular go to. In the meantime, William, any uh, any take on the shot? That's uh, many go to. Okay. <laughs> many go to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, as you both said, that's uh, really good. Uh, I mean, nice transitions there, uh, nice use of physics and emit as well. Uh, we even see uh, some of characters uh, going through these. Um, I don't remember the English name, but this little door on the left on the wall. Uh, yes. I just, I there. just spotted one here <laughs> so yeah pretty nice story and very nice use of uh, go to and 3d space as, and physics as well um, with those collider on the piano and boxes it would have been perfect but otherwise mm -hmm. it's a pretty pretty nice shot yeah absolutely um, good work i think yeah i think we showed that during the academy how to bring uh, crowd rigid bodies so, you know, you know, you could have just a box approximation here on your shelf. And uh, I can see also they're hitting the books. So you could maybe also do some dynamic books, like converting them as, uh, because they're probably like uh, lighter than the arachnid uh, character. So when the arachnid hits it, maybe the books could react to this. You just create a box and that would make the environment move. And uh, all those, uh, all that bookshelf here that probably, it looks like a piano in the, uh, uh, and you know, making them colliders, and that really what like, makes the shot 100%. And uh, I'd say pro I'm not sure if you decided to put, um, if you weren't able to bring the shaders, if I was a choice to have them orange, but probably bringing a a texture on the character. If you're not happy with the default texture that we're having, making your own material of this, like having different materials maybe on it, and uh, uh, just to make them, even if. Actually, it doesn't really disturb me much uh, not having the shaders, but that's a little something you can bring. But I really mm -hmm. like, yeah, I really like the story it's bringing and the, the camera position is pretty well uh, made with the characters coming under it. Uh, so I wasn't able to render the textures. Oh, uh, that's, uh, okay, that's too bad. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's fix this. Let's see how we can fix this. If you're on the Discord, uh, feel free to put a message and uh, we can see how we can get this fixed. Okay, let's move to uh, the next one. So Golem Black Friday from another Nicola, which is why well, it's a popular name. So makes sense. It's uh, one minute 33. 
and uh and okay i guess this is where the black friday happens in that store uh <laughs> So this is the going character here, man and woman. We've got the, some cars, traffic into a big city, and we've got soldiers in the background. So, okay, all the characters converge into the shop, and uh, we've got uh, some characters here walking on the sidewalks. It, uh, it's just too bad that uh, the environment is not textured. And, okay, they're not soldiers, right? But they got shot. Are they like policemen or Police. SWAT? Yeah. yeah, they're SWATs, right? Mm. Walking in formations and oh, sweet, deploying. Nice. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow, nice work. And uh, and all the people going out and some people being physicalized <laughs> and being uh, uh, ripped off by the others. Uh, is uh, so is Nicola around? I don't I'm, think so. Uh, okay, I'm I'm super super impressed by the the SWAT deployment. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'd say the shot is probably a bit long. Um, having maybe different camera angles to help setting the story would help because you've got you know that uh, that long period where you've got the SWATs coming in. So maybe you know having a, a camera being closer to the SWAT so we can understand what's going on. I figured that we're soldiers because maybe you were using like the character pack. Uh, but no, this is a custom character here. So yeah, having different shot composition would help. And uh, yes, that, that hand when they arrive and they spread themselves. From my experience, I can tell it's super, super hard to do. And uh, mm -hmm. the result is super nice. Uh, even if they're maybe slightly playing all the same animation. So here it's a custom asset being converted, probably some custom animations there. Uh, and uh, well, the rest is pretty casual. That's stuff we've seen. So I'm super curious how that was achieved. It looks like a polygon. Uh, oh, you ah, so? polygon target. No, I think yeah. hmm, I think is because they're keeping their formation during the whole duration of the shot. Uh, so I think he's using the go-to formation, which is something we haven't seen at all during the courses. So um, yeah, really, really impressed. The rest is, I mean, the rest is more casual, having all the characters converging. Which is great. There's a nav mesh with obstacles, there's locomotion. Uh, probably the default uh, navigation is not uh, perfect when you do such a big density of characters. You you can probably switch uh, extrapolation to something else. But yeah, those, those SWATs people here, yeah, really amazing stuff. We we can totally see them like like you have in army information where they are into one shape and splitting it into another shape. I really like uh, mm -hmm. that effect here. It's, yeah, it's too bad that uh, uh, Nicola is not here to comment uh, the work. Uh, here we can see the characters, they're full ragdolls. So um, we've seen two previous uh, examples that um, sometimes you can figure maybe a, a falling animation from maybe Mixamo and bring this as a local servo to have something more realistic when the character is full. Um, yeah, William, go ahead if you got uh, anything to add. Yeah, this uh, SWAT deployment is very nice. Um... Uh, the people running also uh, is nice, especially the ones who are falling, mm -hmm. uh, because some of them are physicalized, but not all of them. So that's a nice touch here to avoid a World War Z kind of effect, you know, swarm effect where one falls and all the ones behind him falls as well and goes as a huge wave of falling people. So uh, the less is more. And in this case, uh, I think it's uh, well balanced here. Uh, I would have added um, drivers in the cars, though, because we can <laughs> see uh, cars in the ba in the foreground yeah. uh, stopped at the traffic, uh, the crossing, I mean. So just adding uh, some drivers could sell uh, these um, driving behaviors. And, uh, and yep, uh, as you said also, a little bit of camera work because we have uh, 20 seconds of I won't say nothing, but there is nothing particular going uh, during this uh, period of time. So mm -hmm. yeah, just cutting a bit uh, there or changing camera and would sell the shot better. But otherwise, yeah, good shot. I'm impressed also by this uh, SWAT deployment. So yeah, good work. Yeah, absolutely. Let's move. Next one, uh, Glenn Crow simulation from Adam. And uh, 
I remember this name from the Discord, so maybe Adam is around. And uh, okay, we've got one minute zero three, really nicely rendered. Damn, the environment. Okay, so I guess the crowds are here. They're, they're probably uh, the parrot birds. So, okay, that's, wow, great. It's really great camera work and shot composition here. You know, a uh, lot of uh, camera angles really helping selling the shots and tell, totally tells the story. And Adam is here. Uh, characters converging. Oh. Mm. Huh. That's sweet work. And then joining. Okay, well done. It's it's pretty unusual crowds having birds and uh, being the the most the main topic of it. But uh, and it's a small number of birds. But uh, in a lot of situation, even for small numbers, uh, when people have their crowd software around, it's usually the task of the crowd TD to take uh, care of this. So we've got a custom, uh, totally custom assets here that you've been converting. Um, yeah, the, I mean, look at the camera work. It really helps selling everything here. It helps selling, uh, you know, the animation, the story, what's going on. I guess you had this environment before and you took advantage of it, but which was really great. And um, those animations also, uh, they're fo probably following a curve with some flocking around, right? It works super well. Uh, the flying is is nice. I guess it's probably adapted to uh, uh, mm. the 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 speed uh, of the different characters. We've got some. I don't know if there are some obstacles or just a curve, and that was uh, convenient enough here. And at the end, they are joining that tree of birds. So I really like it. Uh, probably, if I wanted to, you know, uh, be really pointy about uh, maybe having some diversity on the birds, even if parrots. They're parrots, so they're probably more or less the same. But having maybe just uh, some slight variation of textures, I, I'm not sure if there are any here. Uh, but from my uh, from my seeing here, I would tell that they're probably more or less the same. Uh, but just having some small team variation, maybe a small geometry variation as well. But yeah, I like I really like the shot. Mm -hmm. Me too, yeah. Nice composition, nice use of the flocking behavior. Um, the curve sells, the, the use of the curve sells the, the global behavior of the birds. So there is nothing extreme or weird in their uh, movement. So that's nice. And the final shot uh, with all the other birds, um, the parrots blend really nicely with them. So they're, yeah, good work good composition and good use of the flocking system. Yeah, and from my experience, not really easy to set up that flocking. Uh, so mm -hmm. having, you know, something which looks like bird requires, I know a lot of tweaking to get the right mass and speed. Uh, and also, yeah, just as a side note, I liked uh, the lighting uh, of that shot here when you can have like uh, the characters out of the dome of light, which are really blacked out and we can see the silhouette. It's super, super nice. Uh, um, you know, heart addition to this. So yeah, really, really great work here. Well done. Yep. So let's move to the next one. Go and test from uh, Carlos. And uh, Carlos was also uh, on uh, the Discord. So maybe he's around as well. So let's check. It's 31 seconds and it's another flocking. I can't see exactly the characters, but uh, they are not birds. They look like a drones. And yeah, you, you can see here the, the, oh, and okay, that's totally drones there. Uh, okay, it's bee drones. Mm -hmm. Drone robots. And Carlos mm -hmm. is here. So yeah, you can see here, it's, it's almost the same behaviors than before. But with a totally behavior, uh, a totally different behavior in way of moving and way of converging, you can see they look more like insects being. Uh, it looks really like a cloud of insects being really organic. I really like the effect of it. They are tilting uh, the right way and uh, changing their orientation the right way. 
I like yeah, I like that characters getting in mm. at the last minute and uh, moving the target away and because you know on. when you start watching it, you you expect something to happen. So yeah, I, I was Absolutely. expecting something. So it, it's good that it's coming at the end. Absolutely. <laughs> um, the environment obviously really helps selling the universe of the shot. Having drone robots in uh, that environment really really helps. Wait a minute, I spotted. Yeah, I figured I spotted some characters out of. Uh, the B here. Okay, there are some characters here. Some really great additions, and I could I could feel that there were some characters outside uh, where I was watching, and that was adding something. And uh, when I was rewatching the the shots, I could spot there are some characters here moving. Uh, that's awesome. I spotted one on the wall. Mm. You need more. You're right. Yeah, there's one here <laughs> which is doing something. There's one there climbing the wall. Yeah, oh, yeah. you need more of those. They're really great adding. You know some life around your main attraction when you mm -hmm. you know when you look at the shot multiple time and you got that guy here which looks like super excited here oh okay and from when you look at that the first time you can feel there are more but you don't necessarily see them and when you watch it again yeah having more of those guys watching the main crowd uh would really yeah bring more of those um, I, I love the out of the camera work. I love the environment. I love the universe. It's really great work. The lighting is super nice. Having that glowing ball, which is like mm -hmm. a, uh, adding something on the characters and uh, having that main characters as well. William, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I like the 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 universe and the, this is a nice um, beehive uh, swarm like effect uh, we can see the organic uh, feel of this simulation but at the same time it's just robots flying around this huge uh, glowing ball so nice mix of um, technique that yeah the, this organic uh, synthetic use you know mix blending of stuff that's really nice and I like the small touches of uh, the characters on the walls there and there yeah, good work. Good work. Yeah, I love that guy climbing on the wall here. He's uh, like for, foreground, walking and having a nice animation and going on. Uh, there's one guy on, on the top as well, looking at the crowd. And at some point, he was uh, he's going to rise the, the thorax as well. Super nice addition. Um, are the... Are those guys animated? Uh, do they have uh, maybe some... Uh, I guess if they're drones, it, it means that they've got some... Alex, what's the name for this? Pro propellers. Uh, so propellers are animated as well. Yeah, and animation. Yeah, I can totally see that that guy here. Uh, super excited about what's going on. Yeah, and okay, they are flying animation. Okay, that's yeah, really, really great work. A lot of work being involved into this. Well done. And yeah, that camera move is uh, yeah, it's really awesome. Selling, helping selling the shots. Well done. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, when I look now at the background, I could see some in some position it's not filled, but uh, it's like the twenty, the twelfth time we're looking at it, and now I figure it. So mm -hmm. yeah, really, the eye is uh, kind of uh, interested into what's going on into the first uh, into the foreground. Uh, so next one is um, Golem Academy assignment from uh, uh, Joelle. I'm not sure how do you say it. Sorry if I uh, mispronounce that. And it's seven seconds, and then it's, it was probably like rendered at the lower definition uh, uh, that what we had. Okay, this, damn. And looking at how many characters we have, I now understand why it was rendered with a lower definition because when you have to render uh, seven seconds of those at uh, at 2K, it's a pain. Uh, so let's look at this. We've got uh, people on the outside uh, trying to uh, reach the building. That shot is just too short. Uh, I want to see the charge. I want to see how they, maybe like two seconds more where they just hit each other if you don't want to make the behavior uh, for the, the collision. But yeah, I really like it. It's, uh, you've got stadium stuff with clothes in the background. People are really excited about this. You've got the charging army. So it looks like a gladiator in the, the 21st century because uh, it's really like <laughs> looking like new architecture. Um, and the characters in the, are they moving? They're not really moving, those guys. This is probably what I'm going to tell is uh, I can totally see the placement here. 
the placement doesn't really look organic enough to me. I can I can tell exactly where are the pop tools and how they blend to each other. And uh, if you had maybe um, moving characters would really help. Uh, probably this is the start of the simulation and uh, they start to move forward. So I'm adding some pre-roll here or maybe providing them with a higher velocity to move faster. Uh, because the camera moves, so it's hard to see if they are moving. But having some, you know, having some movement from the the characters helps. And here, composition is is uh, really great. You've got that really nice lighting and shadows. Uh, those characters converging, and you can feel ah, that's too short. Mm -hmm. uh, the guys in the background, and here the placement in the background is super nice with your clothes, uh, with um, yeah, two floors. Uh, mm -hmm. Totally love. I, I would love to see. Yeah, I would love to see that battle. Yeah, ahead, I yeah. agree. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, this is too short. <laughs> I want to see uh, both sides clashing in front of all these people there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and I agree with you on the staying people at the beginning, at the start of the video. Uh, don't hesitate to put a little more frames at the beginning to make people walk, uh, actually properly walk uh, towards the, the stadium. But yeah. And nice also camera, you, nice render. Yeah, I love the lighting. And also, if you you know if you let them, uh, if you let some pre-roll before, uh, even if you put some really uh, you know geometric placement, as soon as the character will start moving, they will bring chaos in the in their positions, and they will scatter uh, themselves around the environment. So if you're lazy in doing that with the population, just let uh, I don't know 10, 12 seconds that you will not use for rendering, but you will just use for the simulation. So, uh, you know, the characters are already placed. Uh, that would really help. Uh, probably like uh, if we maybe reference Carlos shot we had right before with the bees, uh, I guess the simulation was running maybe 10 seconds before because the time to have all that nice swarming around is something, you know, that's something you get only from behaviors and having a lot of frames before and you only render what you need. Uh, so uh, that's also probably a good rule. Uh, if your shot is supposed to be 100 frame, it's probably safe to make 300 frames uh, of it, having 100 frame pre-roll, uh, 100 frame uh, after. So if you need time offset some stuff, uh, you're safe. And yeah, uh, Carlos says the simulation started 50 frames before the render. So yeah, totally. And uh, this is how you bring more chaos and more organicity into your crowds. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So let's move to the next one. Uh, so Golem Academy 2021 from uh, Meg. And uh, I think I've seen uh, Meg making a comment here. Uh, here, and that's a second shot. And sorry for VLC bringing. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay, that's. There's, okay, there's way more than, than uh, what you would think about it. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so I'm curious is it UVP in here uh, going on onto the character? So. No, okay, so that's 3D navigate. So how did you do it? It's 3D navigation. Damn, okay, well done. It works super well. Um, so you've got uh, that spider character, uh, which is uh, jumping here, probably some custom animation here, like a sync motion behavior, probably to mm. have it uh, making the transition correctly between the two surfaces. And uh, I can tell also it, it goes into the ground, so that's probably sync motion uh, and you forgot to probably to turn ground adaptation off so this is probably why the character tries to catch up with uh, uh, with uh, the ground which is below but yeah you have a way to avoid this you've got some I don't know physics collision with the foot mm -hmm. so that character is so that character is yeah okay it's a golem character the way it falls it's a golem character so you've got a custom animation custom characters being converted uh probably also a sync motion to make the two meeting each other at the right spot uh collision detection which is bringing the physics and uh little guys and, walk and then retime in layout and then you've got some characters climbing on top of each other with uh, 3d navigation and retime in layout it's okay when you look at the shot you say okay and when you think about how to make it there's a lot of behaviors being involved, a lot of triggers. So I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the result, actually. I would love to see the setup. Is there a breakdown somewhere? Uh, like the behavior setup 
and the characters there are emitted. Yeah, and there's also emission here, um, mm -hmm. which is coming from, I don't know, it's a emit behavior. It's maybe coming from below the ground. I can send it to you. Well, I'll send it to the Discord. Uh, I think uh, people hmm. would like to see. Uh, uh, William, go ahead. I'm, I'm puzzled by yeah. this shot. To be honest yeah uh so so am i it's far <laughs> more complex that uh, than what it appears um these emit behaviors and yeah physics emit behaviors uh uvp or i mean nav mesh uh, different nav mesh and transitions that's really nice work it's clever it's funny and yeah. it works well in the shot in the composition so yeah great work there. that it's it's really an unusual crowd shot when i mean mm. when you look about it you have one character another character so you've got two characters being really unique and you got that swarm afterwards yeah it's really unusual i like uh, i like the take of it I, yeah. I, i'll just know what was the inspiration here because that doesn't come from nowhere probably uh mm. so yeah feel like free a to nightmare share this afterwards <laughs> on, the, on the discord tell tell the story uh, okay, so uh, Golem Weep uh, from uh, Patrick, and well, I can't already tell what's going to happen. I haven't seen the shot before, <laughs> but I can already tell. The lemmings fall, yeah. <laughs> okay, it's a <laughs> okay, they, they don't even fall, they just like jump into the void. Yeah, they are totally jumping into it. Um, yeah, you can see as, you know, just bringing small geometry, texture, rendering, depth of field. It's not a, it's not a big effort and having really, you know, nice surface really helps bringing the, the shot rather than having a blank environment uh, really helps. So um, our casual setup, uh, I really like it. I'll just say probably there are some characters here, there are... Uh, walking into the they are walking into the void at some point yeah they're, exactly, they're, mm -hmm. they're really looking like uh, looney tunes where that yeah, guy is, is, one, yeah. <laughs> like, is walking mm -hmm. and then figuring that there is that void behind them <laughs> below him and <laughs> it's falling they're kind of going up before going down so probably making there's a it's probably a jump animation being triggered so mm. yeah a lot of stuff here you've got running character probably some uh avoidance you got a specific environment for the physics, so they can fall below the ground and uh, they don't fall before. There's some triggering animation here, and uh, you can also spot they are uh, detaching and dropping weapons. <laughs> there, yeah, there are some dropping weapons yeah. here and there. I'm mm -hmm. trying to spot. Uh, there are banners. I'm trying to spot if uh, the banners have cloth sim as well. Well, one guy at at, at the banner. Casual, I mean, casual idea, and uh, it's always fun to play with physics. Um, mm -hmm. Except that jump, which is kind of annoying. Well, annoying, it's not really the word, but it's uh, getting me out of the shot. Except of the jump, the execution is super nice. Yeah, I agree. It's a fun simulation. Uh, this uh, walking out in thin air could be fixed. But uh, mm -hmm. otherwise, yeah, uh, simple, fun, and works well. So, Yeah, efficient. That's yeah, totally. Mm. That's the word. Efficient. Um, so Roman crowd shots uh, from uh, Shem Sundar. Uh, if you're around, let us know. Uh, so that's Golem Empire. Damn, how many people are there? <laughs> and uh, it's uh, okay. It's a 19 second shot. 25k people. 25k people? Damn! Mm. Uh, what's rendered with? Redshift? <laughs> <laughs> Arnold. 25k people? Arnold, okay. So, well, just for the effort of putting 25 people, 25,000 people, and rendering it, uh, well, well done just for this, because just <laughs> by this, is uh, it's really amazing. So we've got, okay, let's see. We've got walking characters here. So we've got the walking soldiers. We've got a really massive uh, stadium crowd with people on stairs looking into the right direction here. And uh, and uh, I say, okay, so if I had to fix a few things, well, the environment is really great. Having that environment and having uh, those different camera angles really helps. I would say if it's Roman Empire, 
probably Roman uh, people were not uh, wearing, you know, uh, polyester um, uh, undercoats and uh, joggings. So uh, just a small work on the textures uh, would really help uh, having, a, a, you know, a stadium crowd, which is more adapted to the environment you're in. I really love to have those walking armies in formation uh, here in the middle. I'll just say, if you put your camera into this direction, I understand that you want to show, uh, you know, the full uh, environment, which is great, and also showing the full crowd. But maybe you can trick uh, us and put the, the soldiers maybe in front, move the, the soldiers, even if it's not consistent. Uh, just we can see, and uh, the, the shot is maybe more populating in the foreground, because here we've got that uh, huge area, which is empty. I like the fact that the characters are you know, really looking into uh, uh, the soldiers really helps. And uh, also may maybe just uh, camera composition. You've got multiple angles, which are the same way and uh, just slightly oriented at different stuff. So it's always this here, it's the same angle, but with different tilts. Uh, probably you can change the angles, maybe go. Uh, one really sweet uh, shot could be go into the crowds, like go right in the middle of the stadium crowds uh, above the shoulder of one guy, super close, and look at, uh, at uh, the soldier. If you want to like multiple angles, that's one way to do it. Or play with your environment. You've been playing with your environment before. When you enter the, the stadium and you go out, you've got all those columns on the side. Maybe you can you know, frame your composition with two columns on the side and uh, have the crowds uh, in it. But it's super impressive work. Just change the textures and uh, you, you'll be good. Mm -hmm. Totally agree there, yeah. Yeah, nice work. A lot of characters, 25K is awesome. <laughs> and, Just uh, one okay, thing you know? is, I think, uh, you know, at the left-hand side, uh, right. if you go a bit further, there are a bit uh, here, if you stop, oh, yeah, here. You, you can see the, the lines of people. Maybe I, I, you could randomize a bit the, the placement here. Yeah, true. Probably, yeah, it's true that yeah, you can feel the, maybe the, the rows. So maybe mm -hmm. just in layout, you don't have to, you know, re-simulate. You can just go in layout and, and just move the characters, like expand the characters. And uh, as you've got your ground, they'll just readapt to the, the right stairs. Uh, but yeah, indeed, just regarding placement could help uh, selling it, especially because we're having that. Uh, it's really, really narrow... close to the camera. So. Yeah, we, we've got that really narrow angle because probably here they're the same. But as yeah. we are really far from it, we can't spot it. But here, as we're really fr uh, really close to it, we, we see the, the different waves of placements. Sweet. Thanks for watching. No problem. My <laughs> pleasure. Um, so next we've got Space Station Crowd uh, from uh, Bradley, and uh, probably you can tell that, uh, yeah, also it was rendering in uh, low definition here. Uh, eight seconds. And damn, that's too bad that it's rendered in uh, low definition. So is Bradley around? So here, this is like the typical crowd work. Uh, and uh, William may uh, may be able to confirm that. Uh, you know, you you've got that 3D environment where you put a 3D uh, vehicle into this, and obviously you've got that uh, that uh, that layout that you need to fill. And this always end up with the crowd people. The camera position is pretty nice. It's exactly the kind of stuff you can work uh, with, and it's really the kind of plate you can end up with, or not plate, a 3D environment you can end up with and you're having the duty to feel that environment. So you've got, uh, the composition is actually super great. You've got characters going into different directions here. Uh, it's too bad that the, the rendering uh, quality doesn't help seeing if there are men and women, but you can see there are groups of characters. Probably it was not really intentional, but you've got groups of characters walking around. And if you just look at, you know, if you look at that shot, you always look at that spaceship uh, when you watch the movie. And you just want to have moving characters being realistic in the background. And this is exactly what that shot is about. I really like also the small addition of the characters here on the platform uh, speaking to each other and which are really, you know, bringing life to that layout. Maybe you can have, I'm not sure exactly how does the environment looks like, but maybe you can have one, two more here. Uh, maybe one guy here or maybe one guy driving the spaceship, just, you know, having more interaction. But 
I really like the, you know, it's simple idea. It's um, stuff we've seen, um, we've seen, um, you know, all the time and uh, we've seen into the academy and that's, uh, uh, you know, casual behaviors, but really well done, actually. Uh, the, the composition is super nice. Yeah, I like small touches uh, and like people sat on benches uh, on the foreground, people talking oh, next to the ship. I yeah, I haven't seen those. Well done. Yeah, true. <laughs> people, yeah, that pretty people sit on the bench, uh, and you can confirm it's casual crowd work. It always end up you always end up doing some stuff like this, right? Yeah, I can confirm you're right. Uh, this is something that we do pretty much every day. Uh, so. That's nice work there. And adding some small touches there and there, like people sat on benches, people looking at, at the spaceship here, for example, or, or, you know, just people talking, standing somewhere is always nice details to add and um, in order to have a more beautiful and a nice shot. So don't hesitate to put those uh, whenever you want and you can, like people on the platform on the foreground. It's a detail, true, but it always makes the shots better. So, yeah. Yeah, correct. Small addition could be some people <laughs> near the near the barriers looking at the spaceship or uh, tiny stuff. You just put one character here, one character there with uh, some stadium animations there. And uh, and if you render this, you know, in 2K uh, with some nice settings, it's, it's, a, it's a production shot for sure. It's a production shot. Yeah. And when you think about it, it's super simple in terms of behavior is, you know, it's, it's something we've seen. Uh, so, uh, yeah, oops, uh, sorry, I kind of went off. I think we were here. Let, let's move. Uh, so next one is uh, Stadium Crowd uh, from uh, Alexander. And, uh, okay, it's a free second, so we should move uh, through this pretty quickly. And uh, we've got one of the assignments that we had, one of the first assignments that we had, uh, which is, uh, so the character pack here, but uh, with full uh, diversity uh, and some standing animation. I can't really see, I can't really spot um, uh, sit down characters. They're all like standing. Uh, and uh, you've got some uh, rising arms, uh, like balancing characters, which are wearing the clothes. So there's probably different entity types here. Um, Stadium stuff, classic stuff. It you always have to do a stadium, and you always have to bring a, a characters into a, a stadium. Probably here placement looks like uh, grid pattern based as well. Uh, adding some random would probably help. Uh, I can spot some collisions here and there with the characters, so maybe moving those characters when you can spot them. Uh, I can see those guys here; they're colliding with each other. Uh, if you can't really get this out from the behaviors, probably in layout uh, you can remove those guys. Um, Great having some clothes here, uh, and uh, well, it's just working on small details on the placement, bringing probably more characters, more diversity, also into the the animation. Having some seated characters because not everybody is always excited into a stadium. You already have tired people. Uh, any comments on stadium shots? How to improve those uh, when you get them? Uh, yeah, and just adding a bit of uh, diversity and variety in the behaviors is always nice to have because, as Nicola said, uh, not everyone will be standing because, in generally speaking, you have people in the stadium watching a, a football game or whatever game, and there are multiple teams. So one team might not be happy, uh, one, one team of supporters might not be happy with the outcome of the match, for example. So, um, yeah, just uh, putting some people sat or hungry or casually walking around in the on the stadium on the side could be a nice touch to to have. And so, as Nicolas said, uh, you have some people there that are going through um, the environment, especially on the foreground. Uh, on the background, it's not really um, important, meaning that it's usually far and lost in the depth of focus. But on the foreground, don't hesitate to use the layout tool to correct those penetrations that you may have uh, with the population tools. But uh, yeah, otherwise, that's that. Just small details there and there. Uh, not everyone doing the same thing. And you will have a pretty believable uh, stadium quite easily and quite fasty. True. And uh, bringing more behaviors is not a big deal. Uh, we've been seeing this at the Academy, bringing more animation, um, changing the weight of those animations, easy stuff. 
uh then we've got another state well the the videos are sorted in alphabetical order so i guess now we are within the s and the stadium uh video so that's a stadium crowd from antonio uh and uh, probably antonio didn't install the license uh but let's move into uh the shot here and yeah that's exactly what we were saying here we having some sit down characters we're having some standing characters and that really brings uh and here, even the population, I can spot there is some small variation in position, and that really brings something more. Here, we can feel like the crowd is excited, like in the shot before, but you've got diversity. Probably, I'll just say that uh, the Mexican wave happened at the same time for everybody. Am I correct? There's no like temporal shift into, let's see. Yeah, it looks it looks to me that, uh, or maybe it's moving super fast, and all the char yeah all the characters are exactly playing the same animation at the same time. So we've seen during the academy that you can bring a fade trigger to delay slightly uh, the execution of the trigger of the characters, and that's really too bad that uh, it's rendered with the learning edition because uh, else uh, I would have been a really great uh, stadium shot. If you were about to do you know a commercial TV show. And uh, and uh, you need to bring down uh, I don't know it's probably two three thousand characters here. You have it. I mean, everything is yeah. here. It's placed with all the behaviors. You even have clothes. You just have to change the textures to go along with the team and the plates if you have any. But you have it. It's it's all yeah. good. I agree. Uh, yeah, we're good. We are. We'll, we'll do uh, overhaul uh, stuff for stadiums. Um, so, okay, now we're out of the stadium stuff. Uh, we've got uh, Thriller Zombies uh, from Safi. Uh, I'm not sure if Safi is around. I know that uh, she went uh, late into the academy, so probably she didn't have a chance to install the license. Uh, and I guess Thriller is uh, a reference to uh, <laughs> to the Michael Jackson anyway, uh, Michael Jackson song, I guess. And uh, okay, if you guys are not familiar with the clip, uh, you've got plenty of zombies. Uh, dancing the same way in sync with Michael Jackson. Uh, so this is what you have here. Um, I'll say, so probably here the setup looks pretty simple. Still, the char uh, a custom characters has been converted and also a custom animation has been converted, which is always a big part of uh, commitment here. It's really too bad that just, uh, you know, the environment, the shading is not here to restituate uh, the work. I'd say... Um, I, I can totally see uh, I can totally see the grid uh, pattern here, and I can also spot that uh, uh, gravitation is not enabled here because rather than uh, here the characters they they move their knee, uh, so they're supposed to mm. crouch, and rather than crouching, you can see the legs are going up. So this is typically something which you get when you don't define gravitation. If you define gravitation, we know that there is a ground, and we need to move the hip down rather than moving the legs up. Uh, so you just had a terrain uh, into Golem and set it up for your characters if it's uh, if it's not set up by default, and uh, you get your characters being snapped on the terrain and, and being properly uh, specified, or maybe uh, the animation missing uh, footprints. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, uh, you put a nice environment, uh, some uh, you know some shadows, uh, some really uh, uh, low light to get uh, long shadows and a night shot, and it could be great. I mean, everything is mm -hmm. here. It's just a small addition here and there to add. Yep. And one thing I would add, uh, especially for flash mobs or people mm -hmm. dancing in a group like that, is to add a little, bo a little bit of, um, um, how can I say that? Like motion just to make sure, Yeah, just to make sure that not everyone goes at the same time, you know, unless it's a bunch yeah, of robots. Exactly, uh, a small delay in the animation just to avoid uh, this robotic look. Uh, here, these are zombies, so we could assume that uh, not all of them are perfectly synced <laughs> with the other. So just True. a small detail, but that can help uh, greatly help. You can also add, uh, you know, procedural noise on it. Uh, even if if they're playing the same animation with small delays, you can have different amplitude on the arms. Uh, you know, when we were playing with the set bone, we saw how we can influence the angles and something you know is you can multiply an orientation by 110 percent or 120 percent so it just make a bigger amplitude on the arms on the heads 
and you have slight variations on the postures, even if the characters are playing the same animation, it's super, super easy to do. And it's a great addition, really subtle, but it's a great addition to sell, uh, you know, the shot and the diversity, even if you just have one clip. So um, we're kind of moving to the end. We're at the Z now. So zombie, uh, are we, okay, on, uh, uh, two more. So we've got uh, zombie Ord uh, from Klaus. If you're around, let us know. And uh, let's see. Oh, and sorry, VLC is uh, breaking the stuff. And you've got, apparently you've got that uh, poor lady uh, in front, which is uh, very pursued by a crowd of zombie. I like the, I like the point of view of the it's it's a it's a cheap way well not cheap but i mean it's a great way to go away with the environment rather than you know making a sky making a, a lot of geometry in the background to fill your stuff you put your camera in a really uh, narrow place and you and you're getting a glimpse of what's going on in the scene it's really looking like a first person point of view uh and uh you know exactly what's going on here you've got a zombie invasion and probably that lady in the in the foreground that, uh i mean first moving first trying to escape it um <laughs> so here i can tell uh, so character conversion uh there are at least three four different characters being converted um they are probably from uh, mixamo and um, maybe one issue with the mixamo characters is that they come into one piece so there are one meshes so it's not really easy to make geometry variation you know the the golem characters they're break broken into sub pieces so you can switch you know a t-shirt a sweatshirt and you can have a lot of diversity with one character with the mixamo characters that's not something you can do so you end up multiplying the number of uh characters on it and uh yeah true you had to make shading variation but it's not always easy to make shading variation on some you know blank uh the, the whitish textures so when you make shading variation you just have slight uh thin variation here uh, and uh, custom animations, right? You've got uh, characters, uh, those, those animations, there are zombie runs. Uh, so is there is there avoidance into that scene? The, the, the great stuff about having an angle like this, like a side angle, is that you can go away with collisions if there are any. Uh, you can also probably go away with uh, uh, ground adaptation and, and that kind of stuff. But uh, I'll be curious. I like the fact that there are some people running faster than others. You know, it's not really a unified crowd. You've got some characters who are going really fast, which are moving up to the crowds. So I would probably say that there is no navigation here. There's no avoidance, at least, uh, because the characters are really going straight, not really, you know, avoiding the rest. So I'll be curious if um, it's probably just a motion behavior here. It was pure motion. Uh, when I had a locomotion, they came to a stopping groups. Yeah, so mm -hmm. makes sense. But you know what? I can't. I can't really spot if there are any collisions. So, uh, if you can't spot it as a supervisor, uh, it means that it's good enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, I know that you ran out of time, but maybe uh, I don't know what you had planned for this. But and I can see that you have a street in the background, so could be fun and nice to add some zombies coming out of the street as well mm -hmm. to have like a world war z swarm uh, type yeah. of effect uh, yeah sure. of zombie could be nice and fun to do but uh yeah as nicolas said uh this angle works well for um that kind of shot so you have to show us what you had planned for the whole story now <laughs> Yeah, make make some uh, you know some tiny stuff into the streets. Uh, I guess those are supposed to be uh, uh, beans, uh, like trash. Uh, yeah, just adding you know a few textures, a nice lighting, and that will make a you know kind of a shady lighting in the small streets. Uh, would really help you like selling the shot, even if you don't have much diversity on your shading or on your geometry. If you got a like a, sh a kind of um, you know low light environment, you don't really care if the characters look the same. It's really obvious when you are in bright lights. Uh, but if you do something like a zombie in the evening, uh, you can have something super nice with long shadows. Um, yeah, we'll make a story about. Yeah, please do, and uh, you know we'll keep uh, the Discord will still live uh, after two sessions. Uh, we decided to uh, you know still go on it uh, every day, help uh, people who need help. And we're probably going to bring uh, also our regular customers. Right now, the Discord was 
you know, reserved for the academy people, but we share the information with, uh, you know, our customers and uh, it will be a great way to interact with people in production as well, in addition to the, to the Senpai, which are already there. And we're moving to the last video, which goes straight to the point. It starts like frame zero. There's already some stuff going on. Uh, <laughs> so that's a zombie attack D1 uh, from Antonio. And uh, okay, apparently Antonio like um, submitted two different videos and uh, okay, let's move into this one. It looks exciting. Uh, so we've got, uh, so apparently he wasn't able to install the license or hadn't had the time to do it. And we've got probably a War Wars -y kind of inspired uh, shots. It's using the Golem character, uh, man and woman and uh, custom animations here. Uh, probably not much uh, of uh, navigation or avoidance. I can see some collisions here and there. And uh, I really like the the people crawling into the wall. I'm not sure what's going on once they reach the the camera is like easily placed, so we can't really see what's going on when they reach the, the top of the wall, which uh, it's part of the game, right? And uh, I guess he wanted to make a piling up here, but he just ended up with uh, some ragdolls. So uh, it's not exactly probably the effect which was looked for. Uh, I'm not sure. Apparently, Antonio is not around. Um, if you want to, you know. If you want to know more about uh, World War Z, especially, uh, if you look at the, the, the making of, when you reach that shot, uh, what they had is they had some geometry which stand at the base for the crowd. So you create uh, you know, a nice conic geometry with some noise on it, and you just snap your characters the same way you snap them on the wall. So here, I'm, I'm, I guess he's using either 3D navigation or UVP or something like this. So you do exactly the same around some geometry. You can even animate that geometry. You can put different layers of characters on top of each other, like uh, the person who was making the B. Uh, within the B system, you know, you had characters walking on top of each other. So that's something you can do. You can have crawling characters and you make multiple layers of those. And then you hire hundreds of animators to fix all the small collisions, which are super, uh, super <laughs> close on camera. But I mean, if you just want to concentrate on the crowd, you make a shape, you snap those uh, on that, and uh, you make multiple layers and you do a transition to the wall and you've got a wall onesy shot. shot. That's exactly how you get it. I was referring to animators because um, everything you see, which is super nice in World War Z, all the, you know, all the interaction between the characters obviously is not something you get from a crowd simulation. Uh, you have to take, uh, it, it will take you ages to do this. So uh, what's usually done in to-do situation when you get characters super close to camera or, or characters which are, you know, uh, taking attention, uh, those are promoted as hero. So usually they go out of the crowd pipeline and you've got, uh, you know, keyframe animators we are, which are taking over those characters. So maybe the first base layer is made with, you know, crowd, the crowd system, and uh, you get those keyframes and then you ask animators to add more animation layers on top of that. So you promote those characters. So this is usually how those nice collisions with characters putting their, putting their hand on the head of the other guys, all those interaction, really fine interaction between characters end up uh, being done with. But yeah, it doesn't miss much. Just making, uh, you know, just a that conic structure, uh, snap the characters on, put the license, and you're good. Mm -hmm. Indeed, and maybe a little bit more diversity in the foreground uh, because there are only women yeah. running toward the wall. So just, yeah, again, uh, that's a detail, but that can really help um, setting the shot. Yeah, it's a, it, yeah, true. It's only. Uh, I now just uh, figured that it's. It looks like it's only woman. It looks like it is. It's only the woman character. So yeah, bringing one more character, sharing behaviors, and you're good. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that was the last video. But uh, maybe as uh, William joined us uh, lately, we can uh, go back. Uh, you know, to uh, the first one. So this is <laughs> golem work. Uh, but we can skip this. Um, yeah, we had uh, Leonard uh, shot with an archery scene. Uh, with some uh, arrows falling into the ground and some characters reacting to physics, um, especially now that we've seen some, uh, you know, some setups with textures, will really help to have, uh, you know, just uh, some textures into your environment. Apart from mm -hmm. that, uh, camera is good. You may want to have those arrows planting into the ground rather than uh, gliding into this. We're not sure if there were collisions. Uh, but uh, it's fair enough. Even if there aren't any collisions, not everybody's falling. So that, that, that looks good. Yeah. And I love the nice small addition of, uh, 
of the chief holding the sword and saying, okay, shoot now. Yeah. Again, nice details like this, uh, subtle, but really, really good when you look at the whole simulation and the whole shot. So nice work, nice composition, nice cinematic uh, shot here with the camera angle and the camera panning. Yeah, and as you said, uh, the arrows could be um, stuck on the ground uh, in a better way. So just polishing up the, the shot, uh, adding some textures on the environment and fixing there and there the, the small hiccups that you have and you will have a great shot, definitely. Cool. Uh, that was uh, the charge from uh, Yan, and um, that was a really impressive work here uh, with archery guys, uh, some falling horses and detaching characters, and charging armies catching up. So Yan was sharing that uh, all the navigation here is using the chops uh, okay. to you know make the characters flee. Uh, drive the navigation of the horses. Uh, apparently, he wanted to experiment uh, with uh, with chops. Uh, and uh, yeah, we've got physics with detaching characters, uh, planting arrows, uh, subtle details, uh, but uh, the arrows are planting into the ground. Uh, yeah, really sweet work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Bye, Meg. Have a have a great day, and thanks for thanks for joining. See ya, Meg. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uneven terrain. Uh, yeah, a lot of stuff going on into that scene. Yeah, we have even horses and uh, dying during the charge, so that's great. The only thing, maybe uh, the only detail, uh, I'm a really guy. I'm a guy really focused on details. So I'm sorry about that. But uh, the only detail that I might uh, see would be the the archers. Uh, fleeing the scene uh, could have been nice if they flew uh, in all directions um, mm -hmm. uh, rather than going into one direction behind yeah, so them. That but so that would have scattered the crowds. Uh, yeah, correct. E True. Exactly when they see that the cavalry charge uh, just went through, <laughs> the, their friends in front of them will, will have been nice. But uh, that's just a detail. The, the whole setup is pretty good. And the use of channel ops is <laughs> a really good thing, actually, because it's it can be quite complex, as I imagine. You saw that, uh, but as soon as you master the, the use of uh, channel operators, you will see Golem in a new uh, vision, I will say. <laughs> well, I think Yano already had experience as, a, as being a crowd TD, and you can tell. Mm. There, there's already a lot of experience going through, and uh, that's just bringing him a new tool into his hands. But uh, mm -hmm. he's got, yeah, he's, he's got the, the the good layers. Am I correct? Yeah, and you're you're already working yeah. as a crowd team. I think so. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, you can totally feel it's. Uh, it, he embraced the job. Yeah, he, he already has the skill of composition, and uh, yeah, everything is fine. So I guess that was more like a making an experimentation with the chops, and uh, that's really successful. So hope you had fun with this. Um, then we've got uh, yeah Zhao Yang uh, uh, road intersection, which was uh, play blasted mostly. I think uh, if I remember that was just uh, yeah because uh, the rendering engine he had uh, couldn't work out. Uh, but Shibuya crossing with cars stopping um, and characters avoiding. I was just referring to probably maybe you want to add more characters in the background. Not everybody is waiting to cross uh, that. Uh, that intersection, just having people walking in different directions. Uh, and uh, as soon as you know you bring the rendering, you get the diversity on the cars. So uh, and that's that's rather fine. Uh, but yeah, just you know, adding uh, probably more uh, also diversity in terms of character, bringing the woman characters in, and uh, and you get something which is working. Yeah, totally agree with that. Having people on the sidewalks behind and walking would be a nice add uh, to have. But the system of people crossing the, uh, the roads is working pretty well. So good job with the traffic as well. So yeah, nice job. Uh, then we had a Boris shot, uh, which is way too short. Uh, four seconds. Uh, custom characters breaking parts. Uh, we're not sure if it's emitting lasers or in collisions. Uh, and custom animations being converted, uh, really sweet environment. Um, wow, nice camera move. 
so yeah, all good. We just wanted to be uh, longer and uh, we would have loved to know more about those lasers. Are they golem lasers or are they, uh, are they just uh, a layer being at, added on top of it? But Lego are always fun to play with. Um, <laughs> Alex is set up on the characters as well. So yeah, a lot of, lot of uh, commitment uh, here as well. Yeah, that's pretty nice to see. <laughs> Um, then we've got uh, uh, Vinicius shot, uh, and well, it's more a reel if I remember this properly. There's uh, plenty of different stuff. So the city is not made with golem, uh, ah. unfortunately. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll show you a shot afterwards. So we've got um, a really nice flogging uh, actually. Uh, so uh, custom characters being converted. Then we have um, a full city simulation with uh, characters. I was saying they're all going into the same direction. Probably they're pr and probably they're pretty low in terms of speed. Uh, so you may want to have different opposite direction coming through. Uh, yeah, small, maybe small issue with ground rotation, but nothing too big to uh, to figure. Uh, and also taking all the meshes into account into the nav mesh, and uh, it will move into something surprising at some point. So we've got a main character. Mm -hmm. There's sound. I'm not sure if the, the sound is shared. I kind of like that, you know, that low light shot here. And uh, yeah, synchronous crowds uh, all along. So yeah, a lot of stuff going on, uh, a lot of great idea and uh, doesn't take much to, you know, fix uh, what's going on here. Yeah, you're right. Just small details again. There and there, just making people walk uh, in over direction than the one everyone is taking. Uh, a little fix to do in the layout, especially on cars that stop uh, on crossings or you know just stop when they are not supposed to. But yeah, nice idea, nice use of Golem. And the, the dancing part is really fun. <laughs> we can see that in the video clip music, I think. That works well. Yeah. We, we mm -hmm. were referring yeah, we were referring to the run to run the jewels uh, clip from the meal, uh, which had mm -hmm. an extensive usage of crowds. Uh, we add uh, Adrian shot uh, with uh, <laughs> A lot of stuff going on here. So custom characters with custom physics, explosion, locomotion, probably a slow motion here. We've got mm. some super nice close uh, uh, crowd and uh, people talking to each other. So once again, custom animation here. But yeah, really impressed by the quality of the close deformation with the physics system. Nice indeed. And also some close on the, on the scarf hat uh, for yeah. the character. So more like a test. Uh, another custom characters with custom animations here, like a charging army, more like a test. It looks like the, it looks like the massive agent. Uh, uh, maybe he bring that as an FBX. Um, here a uh, archery with planting uh, arrows uh, being emitted. Some characters protecting themselves, probably with a set bone behavior. Um, and uh, some horses, custom assets as well. With uh, people on horses, custom assets, and those are not always really easy to map. So uh, yeah, really great, uh, you know, really great range of works into a one-minute reel. With uh, yeah, uh, maybe uh, well, actually, I already, I already like the shots. So it, not, not too much stuff to do. It really shows, you know, the diversity of what the the, the guy can do here. But go ahead. Exactly. Yeah. Any That's something comments? that can be expected from a crowd demo reel, actually, because we have a lot of different behaviors and different crowd uses. So we have a bunch of CD shots, a bunch of uh, cloth uh, system, really nice cloth system, uh, by the way. I wonder if you use Apex or uh, Ncloth, because yeah, true. I am actually, I haven't even I haven't even asked. I assume you were using Apex. Apex. I'm curious if you were using, oh, you were using Apex. Great, awesome. Holy cow. Yeah, awesome. I'm doing the same stuff today, so <laughs> I'm surprised. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, nice, nice use of uh, different user cases. We, we have some uh, physics. We have some, uh, like this shot is great. Um, we have some cloth stuff. We have some charge army stuff. This is, for me, a great uh, crowd demo reel, uh, more than, you know, a crowd project on itself. Yeah, so absolutely. that's very good. That's very good. Uh, I'd say, um, 
well, especially the, the two people speaking to each other, talking and walking, make make a, like a, a great, uh, I don't know, like a great uh, matte painting or environment and put some characters, I don't know, like 30, 50 people uh, into a shot, like really like a, a living shot where you just want to populate this with that quality of assets. And uh, I'm sure you'll get a job right away with just one shot like this. With because here there's so much attention to you know the composition of the two characters speaking with each other, walking with the great deformations is something which is like hard to get uh, from even experienced people because close is not always something people take advantage of. But when you got characters like this, you can't really get away without close. So uh, yeah, just uh, you know uh, make one awesome shot uh, with this, and uh, you're good. Yeah, Indeed. you wanted to test collisions on the first one. And it's true that it's not only setting the close, it's all also setting the collision with the close. It's true because you have those legs moving uh, like uh, under the close, which are reacting to this. It's true. I totally forgot. It's not just painting it. It's also testing collision. So yeah, it's really great. Uh, I'm, I'm yep. super impressed by the result. It's almost as good as uh, what uh, David was able to get on uh, the Nutcracker uh, shots. And which took them a long time to achieve and properly and understand all the parameters. Do you have a, just a curious, do you have a background in close simulation or so on? Um, is it maybe, maybe you're the one I spoke with uh, on the Discord regarding close and you were saying you had experience in close, right? Let me know. I just, uh, you tried before. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I just puzzled now with names and uh, with everybody I spoke with. Uh, so yeah, we've got a crab, uh, a crab walk here. Um, <laughs> complete uh, custom characters with custom animation, diversity in shading and geometry. I was just so sad that they're just evolving on the flat ground. I would have loved to see them on the beach uh, with mm -hmm. some, uh, you know, bumpy sand. Uh, but you know, taking a, a eight-legged character into uh, into Golem and making a mapping, still impressive by its own. Uh, but you just want to now that you put so much effort, you just want to put a nice environment and and make them live, go into different different direction, uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, do some uh, great stuff. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, then we've got uh, Boris Shot, uh, Golden Academy twenty twenty one. With uh, a really great uh, camera work here, really great layout, uh, and a really great crowd simulation. Uh, some uh, some subtle diversity on the character, uh, character trajectories, character diversity, uh, geometry assignments, shading assignment, some resting characters here, some uh, you know uh, formations here in the background. Um, yeah, really awesome shots. I I think Boris has some has some experience in crowds as well. I, if you don't have experience in crowds, it looks like you have, which is a great compliment. Okay, you don't. Great. So <laughs> that take it as a as a, as a big compliment because I would expect this from a studio in terms of behavior and subtle details you can spot on. Uh, but go ahead, William, if you want to share. I already shared my comments onto this. Yeah, as I said, that's a really nice simulation. We have a ton of details there and there. It's subtle, but it's working and you don't need a ton of characters to have a good crowd. So that's working really well in these shots. And you put some sad people on the ground as well. So that's nice. Cannot, uh, it's not that easy uh, always, depending on the motion itself. Mm -hmm. So it can be, can be a pain sometimes. But yeah, nice shot. Nice use of Golem, nice use of crowd, nice composition. Good job. Um, we're on uh, Jordan, uh, Jordan Real. Uh, so he was at the army uh, while making that uh, video. So not everything is rendered, and uh, there's uh, you know small attention to details to uh, take care of, especially collision with uh, uh, the environment, collision between characters as well. So we had the giant character hitting care, uh, hitting the cars. We've got cars hitting soldiers. Uh, I think we're getting another uh, view. Uh, of uh, of this afterwards. So yeah, I was uh, referring to probably providing a higher frequency for uh, the the collisions to happen. 
uh, taking into account the environment for uh, the collisions. And uh, yeah, apparently you wanted to cover plenty of different use cases. So there's traffic and soldiers, there's a casual stadium stuff with clothes. And uh, yeah, just having it rendered uh, and uh, and uh, having maybe also a props here but for the for the horses, like a spear to hold. So when the characters hit each other, uh, they can <laughs> hit it. And uh, a casual formation with a free quarter view uh, where you just uh, would like to have more people walking, but that's uh, um, yeah, that's a great word. Just need to be rendered uh, and uh, pay attention to small details. That's right. A little bit of fine tuning overall, and you will have some great things to show. Definitely. I have a. I really like that angle here and that uh, you know that composition here uh, with a nice uh, battlefield uh, terrain with more characters walking. It could make a really really great shot. Mm -hmm. With all those characters duplicated in layout to make an even bigger yeah, true. army, true. could be nice as well. True, no need to go back into sim, you just go into uh, layout. Uh, <laughs> then we've got the duck, uh, the death, <laughs> duck attack uh, with different <laughs> variations. So uh, uh, Alexi didn't have the time to make the trees. Uh, but yeah, I was uh, referring maybe having some flying characters as well. Uh, let's mm -hmm. fix also the ground adaptation, which is uh, probably on the smooth geometry, and uh, the geometry probably needs to be subdivided before uh, they mm -hmm. get into Golem. But you get a really nice nav mesh go to locomotion, really unusual, uh, with custom characters being converted and uh, an animation. You know what? Yeah. It's not far from the Love Death and Robots uh, shot. It's you true. know, it's huge. Which is also a great compliment. Uh, we've got uh, a <laughs> shot into. Uh, uh, what Blur made a shot for Love, Death, and Robots of uh, aliens converging down a hill. Uh, maybe I'll get some time to show that afterwards. And uh, the farmer episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The farmer one. yeah, correct, correct. It's not really yeah, far from it. Just that was aliens. Uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, we had uh, Lisa Project, which was a, a bit dark of uh, a cockroach, uh, you know, moving through a rock. Um, I was uh, probably saying that if we want to see the coach roach, uh, you know, from closer, maybe either get into a, a, a you know, an Burke camera. So the camera moves along with the coach roaches so we can see exactly what's going on and we can see them uh, moving uh, around here. Uh, they um, are supposed to avoid the nav meshes, but I fear that it's probably, uh, you know, she's using probably a locomotion behavior here. So a uh, motion behavior, sorry. So it's heading the offset, so this is why it's ending colliding with the rocks. Um, mm. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to see. It's it's too bad because uh, she converted her, her assets and her motions. Mm. So having um, probably a different layout uh, would probably help uh, selling the shot better. Yeah, I agree. And also having like a bumpy bumpy terrain or having them climbing onto the walls are the same. Uh, you know, the same system that uh, Nicola uh, showed into his arachnid uh, uh, scene. But and then we are back to the first. Say. Yeah. Uh, we're back to the first video that uh, uh, you mm. arrived with, and I kind of, you know what? I kind of like that 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 video here, that shot. It's, I mean, it's unusual. It's pretty uh, surrealist, uh, but I kind of like it. I like the way the the fishes move and the camera moves and how they move towards the camera, how they move around the spheres as well, and how they get killed and emit some planets. So I'm not really sure. It's too bad that. Uh, the artist is not here to share how it did that, but I guess uh, we had a demo where we do a catapult attack, and as soon as the you know the ball hit the ground, it just emits a lot of uh, smaller parts, like to say that it was broken. It kind of spread into pieces. So maybe it was inspired by that setup here and, and made that setup itself himself. Yeah, that's nice. That's yeah, really nice. Unusual. Yeah, it's pretty unusual. Mm -mm. Uh, so let's uh, maybe just to finish uh, this session, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to take uh, four hours with this. Uh, maybe we can share uh, William work if I can figure where I put this. Yeah, you have your home directory into my freelance stuff. <laughs> okay, it's not here. It's, ah, uh, stop it. It's <laughs> his art. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Uh, so there's two versions of it. So let's uh, bring them all. Hmm. I can so, see my uh, former comrades' names. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, some yeah. of them, some of them did some crowds. Uh, yeah. So, 
exactly the same, you know, exactly the same format that you guys had uh, two days of training. That was uh, uh, me and uh, a crowd TD from uh, a studio in France called Mikos. Uh, and we, we teach uh, those guys probably the same stuff than uh, you had. Uh, well, at the time, that was... Uh, yeah, less you know, stuff because there was less features. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that was probably going free or going four. So we didn't have the chops, we didn't have the clothes, we didn't have the fur. Uh, there the was plenty of stuff missing. Uh, so uh, that was probably one of the first version, including the flocks. Uh, but I'll say, well, go ahead, comment. Do your own comment. Yeah, so I was basically blown away by Golem at that time. And I thought to myself, OK, what if I do uh, just a bunch of people marching like a soldier? And at that time, I was really, really, really into Star Wars, as a lot of people in the industry, I guess. So I began, I started by doing a bunch of uh, people there. Uh, so I remember that there was no, there wasn't any layout uh, back in the day. So it's I had to. Really yeah, I had to simulate all those characters uh, manually. Uh, so yeah, a lot of characters. But then I said to myself, OK, what if I do the city uh, completely in Golem? Because my computer was a bit slow at the time. Uh, I had a, a poor laptop. So I just grabbed a few models of Coruscant and did all the city that you can see behind the, the, the characters in Golem as entity types. And then I said, OK, what if I could do that with vehicles as well? So my aim was to do everything, or at least the most things uh, in Golem, just to see uh, the limits of the plugin. And I was really surprised, as you can see. I remember that my render uh, broke somewhere and just the day before the deadline or the weekend before the deadline. So I was kind of, uh, yeah, that was a bit of a nightmare, but uh, Nicola mm -hmm. and, and all the Golem crew gently proposed me to render uh, my project. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember. It saved me. <laughs> yeah, true. We, had a, was... we, had, we had that computer, which was offered by Intel, which was like a supercomputer at the time. And uh, yeah, we rendered that sequence with our uh, supercomputer. But you know what? I like the details. I like the, the foreground. Uh, planes getting uh, getting in the camera uh, when you the camera lowers. I also ha uh, I also like you know the opening, those different places happening here and there, adding you know uh, just some life around uh, the actual crowd. So that was version one. I think that was the one submitted for a quoting, and that's version two where you can see that there's depth of field. There's more work on the environment and on the shading on the lighting as well. And uh, I think the shot is longer as well because before it was cutting like right uh, when we see the the, uh, the 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 clones walking, and now we can see them like totally uh, walking there. Yeah, back in the day in my school we were limited on ten or twelve seconds per project, so I had to yeah. cut some parts to be in time. But yeah. So that yeah, that's kind of stuff the kind of school projects uh, that uh, yeah we can get. Um, probably I can share uh, maybe one or two more works uh, from uh, uh, the same uh, session here. So mm -hmm. we've got uh, Tiago who also made some crowds afterwards and uh, do some crowds here and there. And it really reminds me of uh, mm. of uh, you know uh, Boris shot as well. Uh, you know we've got that uh, small army uh, walking in the background. Um, and uh, some environment around. And, you know, it's super simple. When you think about it, it's probably one motion behavior, uh, but it's super well combined with uh, the camera, the environment, and uh, it really helps selling the shot here. And uh, we had also um, uh, Romain's work, uh, mm -hmm. one of the simplest thing ever, uh, one character, one motion, uh, no shading, no shading diversity, but once again, it's just the composition of the shot. It tells a story. It's, it's the simplest behavior ever, but it has it has a real story. And uh, you've got small elephant, big elephant. There's probably collisions here but, and there. But you have to, you have to say that uh, it's using a human motion on top of the elephant. Yeah, true. Well, the guy was kind of lazy, uh, Romain. He was. Uh, <laughs> He liked shortcuts uh, when he could. He was like, he, he is super talented, and uh, but super lazy. 
and uh, he likes to take shortcuts. So he didn't have any animation for the elephant. So this is the human walk animation, which is playing here. But thanks to the retargeting, uh, that's working well enough uh, for him. And especially with the camera motion blur, depth of field, uh, you can uh, get away with that. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, that was it. So uh, let's take probably some time, guys, to uh, maybe if you got any questions, if you want to share maybe your experience uh, with uh, how it went that session, uh, um, and also help us improve for the next uh, session we'll do probably next year. We'll, we're going to redo this uh, once again, uh, trying to train more people. Um, so let us know if you got you know any feedback, good, bad. Uh, we're taking everything. You know, it, it was the first session. I figured on my side that probably 10 days wasn't uh, long enough, uh, especially for the people who have uh, work, who have uh, other stuff to do on the side, probably 10 days was not long enough for you to achieve what you wanted. And also getting you know the support and help you, things, uh, help you fix uh, those issues. So um, yeah, let us know if uh, that's great. Uh, one question is um, uh, until when is the license running? I think it's May 21st. 21st, yeah. Uh, but, uh, I mean, if you want to have a longer license, especially if we know you and this is a name I know, so uh, Tristan will be happy to make you a license because uh, we've been working together and uh, we've been building a trust, uh, a trust relationship. Uh, so we'll be happy to provide licenses or at least unlock your scenes. Maybe the, you know, the first one, two, three times we can unlock your scenes so you can render them without any limitation. And at some point, if you want to, you know, train yourself, make your own shots, uh, make, uh, you know, your reel. Uh, we'll be happy to uh, provide, uh, uh, you know, commercial, non-commercial license. I think William is having one, for example, for its own personal project. So there are a couple of people here and there that, uh, you know, we want to build relation with that we're just giving licenses away. Uh, Academy went awesome. Uh, nothing worked during my project, <laughs> but nothing worked during my project. But I will do my project over with more with more time. I'm really so he sorry to to hear that. Um, I'll be happy, you know, to you know uh, help you uh, through the Discord and uh, and uh, probably see uh, how we can uh, move forward. Maybe in private discussion if you had uh, specific issues with uh, something. Uh, first moving is coming out this winter, by the way. Hope you guys will be able to see it. Oh, that's great. Okay. Uh, so yeah, Tristan has some experience with crowding with Golem. I'm not sure if he learned a lot of... And actually, you didn't submit anything, right? You're assisting. You're here to... You're probably here to try to hire people, right? Um, would you quickly show how to have motion with evidence? Yes, I haven't, I haven't forgot about it. Uh, so uh, don't... don't uh, no, no problem. I'll show, I'll show that. Yeah, working full time, so didn't have too much time. So fair enough. Yeah, hopefully you figured uh, some names of people you want to hire later. Um, how long do you think a good duration for a crowd reel? So William, it's a good question for you. I'd say between one minute and one minute forty seconds. What? So that's uh, it's in... questions which which uh, happened a lot, and probably you answered that on the Discord, but. Uh, what kind of shot do you expect to see in a reel and what world will make he, uh, especially let's say amongst the different stuff you've been seeing tonight, uh, what are the stuff which would really tell, okay, I want to get that guy in an interview and, uh, and know more about uh, that guy. What's the kind of stuff you want to see? Um, on a general manner, um, we in the industry or at least as crowd people and crowd leads are interested in seeing a lot of different um, use of crowds so not just a bunch of people walking because it's fine on its own but showing people that you can do a bunch of user cases like battles like uh, traffic um, locomotion city stadiums the more you can show us the more it we can see that you know how to use golem and all any crowd software, not especially Golem, mm -hmm. but that you can do on your own a lot of different stuff. Because as a crowd artist, you will be on your own most of the time for working the simulations. So you are responsible for the whole simulation of a sequence or a shot. You won't split this with another person. So we have to see that you will be able to work on your own. And it's OK if you will have any questions. We are there for this particular issue. but. Yeah, showing us that you know your weight around the cross software is always nice to have. So 
how you can show that. Uh, you can show that by um, putting different stuff in different user cases in your demo reel. And the more variety and diversity you show us, the better it will have um, as an effect. Makes sense. And uh, probably just also as a, you know, as a disclaimer, um, William is working for a high-end studio. So obviously they're looking, they never know what's coming up to them for the next show. So bringing diversity into your reel is really helping getting hired into, you know, high-end places. Um, if, you know, if you don't, uh, if you're starting as a crowd artist, it may be quite hard maybe to figure, you know, the assets, the motions, that kind of stuff. So it's not always easy to put this together by your own. Uh, it's always easier to, you know, show stuff you've been doing in production where you had animators helping you doing uh, the right clips, riggers making uh, the right uh, stuff, uh, lighters lighting your environment nicely. So keep in mind that there are also some positions and there are a lot of them. This is high end, but you also have, you know, commercial work to help you getting started, uh, episodic work, animation, uh, uh, TV shows, uh, animation TV shows and that kind of stuff where, um, they're taking, you know, remote people and they're looking to have, you know, background characters first, stadium characters first. Uh, so simple jobs. They're also simple jobs to help you, you know, getting nice uh, shots. Don't expect to make your, uh, you know, one minute and a half with everything crowd real um, in the first month. Uh, probably you can start with uh, maybe lower positions and, uh, and uh, figure this out. Uh, you know, especially that there are a couple of studios here and there looking for remote people right now. And, uh, and um, yeah, it's a great way to get started. And then when you're more experienced, you can uh, uh, start looking into uh, making a huge reel with a lot of stuff within it. Um, uh, remake movie shot is a good idea. Yeah, uh, it's a great question. So can I like... Uh, get a inspiration from a movie shot that I really like and try to recreate it on my own? What do you think? Yeah, sure. That's actually one of the first assignments I do to uh, the newest crown artists uh, that come in my team. Uh, usually I do <clears throat> a couple of weeks of training. So even for people that barely started as crowd artists, they will be able after this training to work on most of the shots of any show. Uh, under my responsibility. And one of the first assignment I give to my trainees is to take a lot of the ring, uh, for example, a lot of the ring shots and just redo them with the Golem assets as, um, yeah, as much as they can. So that's definitely a good idea because we know how the shot is in the first place. And if you are able to redo the shot uh, nearly uh, seamlessly, it will definitely be a huge uh, asset to show in a crowd reel and mm -hmm. something to talk about in an interview. So don't hesitate to do that. You, you remember, Nico, the, the guys from Spain, they were doing yeah. like a tour shot and a battle of bastards. Yeah, correct. I think I, I, think I have those. I'll check. Um, so that's uh, another school. Um, so those guys, uh, they made... Uh, uh, those two shots and uh, they get they went hired uh, so one is uh, was hired at El Ranchito working on Game of Thrones and uh, Pere worked into another studio so he, yeah they made they wanted to take a battle of the bastards and uh, redo this so um, you probably all remember that shot so it's a five second shot but it's a really really complicated shot to achieve and uh, that was good enough for that guy to get hired. And I totally understand uh, because, well, there, there's not diversity in terms of there's no stadium and whatsoever, but you, you can tell the guy can do pretty everything. As soon as he can do something like this, uh, you got clothes, you got super sweet, uh, you know, collision, fleeing. Uh, yeah, it's really uh, awesome stuff. And then we got uh, Pere Work, who I wanted to reproduce a uh, uh, Tor Ragnarok shot where the characters all uh, bunch all together. And this is the same setup, uh, you know, I was referring earlier, you put some geometry here and there to have the character piling up on top of each other. And uh, and you're good. Impressive. He even made Thor. <laughs> yeah, even even made Thor with fur and uh, made a digital. Uh, and Well, the thing is, he made a digital uh, asset of it and you barely can see it's uh, supposed to be Chris Emworth. 
<laughs> the, yeah, the layout and the composition is super, super, super nice. Yeah. Again, it's a 10 second shot, but you can tell from just that shot that there's so many into this, uh, so many, you know, details, uh, collisions, and uh, he understood the software. He can totally, and he had totally the, you know, the eye for, for making crowd, that's, that's for sure. And what's interesting in in this shot is that he doesn't have that many uh, crowd yeah. characters, sure. like 30, 40 uh, maximum. And yeah. that's something that may not be obvious for many beginners in crowd. A good crowd isn't specifically a crowd shot with thousands of people. A good crowd is first and foremost a crowd that behaves correctly. So you don't need to have 25, uh, 100,000 of people. I mean, it's okay. It's nice to see uh, a lot of people. But what's more important in that is how, to, how do you use the, the behaviors? If the crowd has good behaviors, and as we can see here on this uh, shot and on the previous one, as Nicolas said, there aren't many behaviors, but they are well executed. And the crowd is believable. So it's worth, this shot is worth um, 5, 10, 20 shots of stadiums with hundreds of thousands of people there because we have some diversity and we have some nice uses of behaviors. So even if you, I remember uh, someone saying that on the Discord, uh, he was afraid that because of his computer, his laptop, he was not able to do a, a lot of crowds. It's not a huge deal because it's not that important to have thousands of entities. The most important thing is to have a believable crowd. So even if you have 20 characters, the fact that you will be able to uh, make the characters proper uh, accordingly to what you had in mind, it's we, it will be much, much better than have thousands of people just doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid of that. Even if you have 20 people, it's okay, as we can see here with the the, the shot of the other guy. I don't remember his name. I'm sorry. Uh, Pere. Yeah. Pere. Um, there's a question. Is it real to accept remote position from studio, from even from junior position when relocation is not an option? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, uh, even right now with the, the sanitary context, uh, studios are open to remote uh, now more than ever. So take this as an opportunity to accept positions in a studio which are not into the same country. Uh, so, you know, the, um, the fixed studio position uh, has been taken by uh, someone who is junior, is just out of school, and uh, he, he wanted to be a crowd artist, so he made a one, two shots, one at school and one with us for an uh, internal project, and uh, he got that job uh, into fix. It was a stadium stuff, st stadium animation, so it means that you will have to convert uh, the studio characters, the studio motions, and make a stadium that will be nicely rendered, nicely uh, you know comped, and you will end up with an awesome shot to put into this reel and uh, grab and try to grab another job into uh, another place with something more advanced. So yeah, take take this as an advantage. Uh, I mean, the COVID uh, situation right now allows to make team which are now international. The people at Skyline, there's one in Montreal. Uh, there's one in Vancouver, there's one in London, all working together, so no problem with uh, with this. Um, yeah, you just have to be, you know, motivated because uh, it's there is a specific reason why crowd artists are so rare because it's it's uh, such a specific job where you are a pipeline into the pipeline. You, you know, you're kind of taking everything from all the different departments. So uh, this is you know this is why it's kind of complicated uh but um yeah there's and this is also why there's so many positions open so take they take this as an advantage if you're not living into the west coast right now it's it's probably a good thing because you're not paying the rent uh, of <laughs> west coast and uh and you can enjoy the salary of west coast uh, nonetheless so probably a good thing um i'll let you guys uh, probably put some questions uh in the meantime i just want to show you um, so that's a question who came a lot of time and it's more like a hack uh, than something else. But, you know, sometimes you don't have the time to create a complete locomotion for your characters, uh, especially when they need to do specific stuff. So uh, I'll do a super quick setup here. I will not even create, I'll create just an empty train. I bring the characters in and uh, I populate my scene with, uh, let's say, a couple of characters here and there and uh, add some noise. 
And here we go. So, um, you know, casual setup behavior is uh, we want to provide a target for those guys. So I'm going to create a target node. I'm going to put it here, put some distance there and um, add a go to navigation. And, uh, you know, sometime you're making uh, some uh, insects, some uh, maybe birds, uh, some characters which are crawling and obviously you don't want to provide a crawl and turn. Uh, crawl fast, crawl stand, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Doesn't make mo much sense, and you don't have ground adaptation neither. You don't really want to make uh, animation transition. So now, probably in this situation, it's a good time to use to not use locomotion. Locomotion is really here to help you doing ground adaptation, motion transitions, and uh, and speed changes. So uh, let's set up my go to to uh, my target pop tool. So they all converge to this and let's say i just have one walk animation so uh one casual mistake uh, a lot of you guys i think did is uh, even if i kind of stress the difference between the two when you are with that kind of setup usually what's expected you to do is to put a locomotion behavior if you end up putting a motion behavior what's going to happen is your navigation behavior will move and will steer the particle and your animation will also steer the particle so see at frame 42, I'm kind of here, not really far from my position. Now I run the same and you can see that at frame 42, I'm way more above um, my, uh, my position than before. So what you have here is especially sliding characters and uh, you've got two different behaviors influencing the position of your characters. So you've got the navigation steering the position uh, forward and you've got the animation adding also its own translation into uh, the motion here. So this is why you end up with sliding feet because the navigation doesn't know that there's something else uh, which is moving the characters up. So what we can do is, as the problem is the motion translation is that we can remove that translation from the clip. So I can go into my motion behavior I can open the clip and now I can figure what are the different options for my clip. So I can see it's a walk normal animation, which is going, uh, which is making a translation of 135 units on the X axis. It's uh, 31 frames, uh, 24 FPS and um, no much uh, rotation uh, velocity here. So what we want to do is remove that translation. That translation is added on top of the particle so I can go into my edit attributes and go within editing the motion. So there's a, just a, it's a, a bug from the Maya interface here, but even if it's grayed out, as soon as you play edit motion, uh, you actually have control on this and you can put zero here. And okay, I can't, okay. Oh yeah, sorry, it's a, sorry, it's a connected by default. So you can break connection. Sorry, it's connected to that translation uh, parameter here. So I can put zero there. And now if I put zero there, you can see that my characters, they look kind of okay. Uh, let's move more frame. So what I did is remove the translation from the animation. So it's not added on top of the particle. But what's gonna happen is as soon as the character reach their position, they will still keep playing that walking animation and they will not uh, you know, stand or, or, or move into a standing animation. And obviously they're all picking you know, the furthest target here. And you can see now the steering tells the particle not to move anymore. And you still have that walking animation, which is performed. So let's say you do, you know, flying animals or that kind of stuff. It's kind of a trick that you can deploy rather than having an animation, which is adding its own offset. You can kill the offset from the clip, or you can say, you know, it's a, a different offset. You can slow down your animation by changing those different attributes. Great. So what if I want this animation to not move anymore as soon as I reach my target? What I can do is uh, another trick. So I'll just move the target maybe closer here. And uh, what I can do is go into the motion behavior. And uh, probably what we want to do is change the speed of the animation dynamically. So when the particle moves, we want the motion to move. And when the particle doesn't move, we want the motion to slow down. So we're going to freeze kind of freeze uh, the motion. So what we can do is go into the speed ratio and uh, speed ratio is where we figure, you know, uh, how fast we play a, a motion clip. And uh, within the speed ratio, I can go into automatic 
And uh, automatic means that now what we'll do is we're going to replay the animation depending on how fast the particle goes. So I can say I want to use the velocity from the motion clip, but I put that, uh, metal, that velocity to zero. Or I can say my velocity is 135 on the x axis. And now we should have. Okay, it's not working properly. So let's see if we can read it from the motion clip. Aha, uh -huh. let's restore back that speed, see if that helps. And okay, combine. So uh, not well. Wait a minute. Let's figure out exactly what's going on here. Well, it's supposed to uh, work uh, this way. Apparently, he decided not to work today. So go into motion, automatic, use velocity from the motion clip, or what's the motion velocity? Let's say it's 10. So, okay, it's probably not the right value. I'm not really sure how much I, I should put into this, or it's not even, well, probably we have a bug on this, so whatever. Um, so I'll, I'll check that scene on my side and fix this, uh, but that will work on two years. Um, what you're supposed to put here is probably the same uh, velocity that what you had into the motion clip. So it's moving 135 units on the x-axis. And automatic means that we're going to, um, if the motion, if the, the particle uh, moves uh, fast, we'll move the motion fast. If the particle moves slow, we'll move the motion slow. So we're going to reduce the speed of the animation depending on what's the speed of the particle. So when you got a crawling animation or you got a fish or a bird or whatsoever, uh, you know, when you are, uh, when the particle doesn't move anymore, you want to keep the position. When the particle moves, you want to accelerate your animation. So this is the way you map those two together. Uh, check exactly what's going on. Probably, um, yeah, I'm running, I'm not running a, an official release. I'm running a build here, uh, like a dev version. So there's probably you know something into that dev version which is not correct, uh, but yeah the takeaway is uh, check that speed ratio stuff and uh, make sure not to combine this with your own offset, uh, so you can have animation being replayed on top of your particle. Uh, I'll make sure to fix this and uh, let you know when it's ready on the Discord, uh, and I'll probably make a tutorial video of this like a three four minutes tutorial video for the people who want to know more about this and how to set the views. Great. Um, so that was, you know, probably the, the most casual point I wanted to uh, show you. Uh, once again, thanks everybody for attending the sessions. That was a blast and we had a lot of fun uh, reviewing uh, your videos and there were a lot of amazing work. I'm, 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 to be honest, I'm super impressed with the overall uh, quality of the work. Um, I'm, I'm going into schools, attending schools uh, a lot of time and, uh, you guys got far better levels than uh, what we can get out of school and uh, we're remote and uh, uh, that was a really dense sessions. Uh, so well done everybody. Um, if you, you know, if you caught uh, the crowd virus, the crowd TV virus, uh, please connect uh, with us on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, let us know you are interested. Uh, there are plenty of positions to fill right now and we'll be happy, you know, to see exactly where you would fit. Uh, help you, uh, you know, uh, getting uh, one of those jobs, recommending you on, on to those position and helping you achieving great uh, crowd reel if you want to, you know, improve yourself before uh, getting into uh, the crowd industry. So yeah, let us know. Uh, you've got our, our names. Uh, we're on the Discord. Uh, so yeah, not really far. So yeah, hope you enjoy uh, those sessions. Um, and uh, thank you all for attending once again. Thanks, William, for joining us today. Uh, we had a really great guest. Uh, <laughs> thank today, you. So that's really awesome to yeah benefit from your experience. And uh, hopefully uh, next year, it will be one of you guys uh, helping William commenting uh, 2022 uh, <laughs> assignments. Um, yeah, so that's uh, probably it for us. Uh, uh, the Discord will stay open. We we'll invite more people to join. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, uh, make this uh, go forward and uh, and uh, make more crowds. <laughs>